All right, hello and welcome to 20 Sided Stories. I'm UDM Nicholas, and thanks for joining us tonight. We're continuing our story of Curse of Strahd, um, the sort of gothic horror-esque themed D&D adventure. Um, just do a quick round of reintroductions for everybody who's at the table. We did a bit of a two-week hiatus. Um, so uh, joining with us remotely is Michael, who's going to be playing Darian. All righty, and then we've got uh, at the table, we've got Sarah who's playing Nora, we've got uh, Kat, who's playing Jennifer, and we've got Brandon, who's playing Cladu. Uh <laughs> Sitting right here, where uh, right next to Sarah, we're missing one player, she's gonna be joining us a little bit later. That is uh, Megan, who's gonna be playing uh, Mary Lou. I'm gonna just switch over to our combat cam, and I'll do a recap here, but just so everyone's clear on who's who, um, we've got Darian, the model here with the green base. We've got Mary Lou with the orange. We've got Jennifer with the sort of lavender pink. We've got Cladu with a big old scythe and the black and white base. And we've got Nora with a sort of pale green base. Um, joining them are a couple other characters. As we're just left off at a combat, here is Irina Kolyana, one of the important characters the team recently came across. And here is her brother. Ismark. All right, and without further ado, uh, we'll jump right into a recap from last session. Um, so, when last we left off, a few weeks ago, um, we were engaged in the story of five strange adventurers who have come together seeking fate and answers to their dreams and strange fate cards that were given to them in their sleep. They have collected yet another card, the Horseman card, from a skeletal rider they encountered in this strange land. Already, they have encountered tragedy. All right, hello and welcome to 20-Sided Stories. I'm UDM. That was well planned. Um, in any case, um, they came across uh, a couple other tragedies already here in this land um, in a dark house uh, and dealt with the problems there and received a few letters from a mysterious S character, one addressing the players directly and another leading them to Ismark Kolyanovich. They also entered a village uh, in this land, uh, the village of Barovia, and saw a mysterious blue-winged raven that led them to a rather unwelcoming inn. There they met Ismark Kolyanovich, the son of the late burgomaster, the mayor of the town, and his sister Irina, um, and learned of the devil's unsavory interest in her and his attacks on their home. Uh, they agreed to help bury their late father at the local church, where we are now, and uh, met the hoarse-voiced priest, Donovich, and hearing some unsettling cries from below in his church. Outside, here in the midst of the graveyard, after the service and burial, the mists of Barovia have rolled in, with six wo wolves slinking in to attack, and a seventh huge black wolf surveying its prey. And with that, we're going to start some combat and get everything rolling there. So um, why don't we go ahead and have everybody. Okay. Why don't we have everyone go ahead and roll initiative. Um, get everything going there. And I'm going to get, oh goodness, sorry. Alrighty. Um, Darian is very ready, nat 20. All right, <laughs> very nice. First roll of the night, already starting strong, I like it. Starting well, starting well. Yeah, very good. Okay, so let's get, um, let's get that going. Let's see here, I'm gonna get the wolves initiative going. Okay, so, let's see here. Very impressive, yeah. All right, and I think we've also got, great. Alrighty. So. Bear with me as I'm getting all the initiative orders set. So that's that. Okay. Darian, what does your natural 20 bring you to? I didn't even check because I figured I got it. Let me take a look. Uh, 23. 23, okay. And, okay. Okay, so 25 to 20, that includes Darian for a 23. 
Um, 20 to 15, or anyone else on a 20 to 25? I'll roll for Mary Lou. Okay. All right, uh, 20 to 15. 17 for Jennifer. Jennifer got a 17. Ismark got a 20, so he's kind of ready. Um, let's see, Jennifer got a 17. Okay. 15 to 10. 10. 11. Okay, so we got uh, 11, 10. Um, before that come uh, Irina with a 14, and Mary Lou with a 13. Then we've got 11 for Nora, and Kalidu bringing up the rear at a 10. All right, so as you guys have just laid the Burgomaster to rest, and the evening has taken a turn for the, for the worse, or rather the morning has taken a turn for the worse, um, the party is engaged with these wolves, and you hear the howl of the wolf, the large black wolf in the corner, although it's white as the model, um, here in the corner, sitting on its haunches, surveying the scene, the rest of them closing in in the open spaces of the graveyard. Uh, Irina, uh, or excuse me, Ismark, yells, Protect Irina! Destroy the wolves! And with that, Darian, listening heartily, is up first. Darian, you're up first with Ismark on deck, followed by Jennifer. Okay, perfect. So, quick uh, game comment. Now that we're in open world, how how uh, how far are distances? Just so I know and can make some plans. Yeah, thank so you. What's um, like thirty feet? What's ten feet? Can you give me a rough estimate? Sure. So thirty feet um, is six inches. So something like that. Okay. Ten feet. Something like that. So you guys are. Okay fair distance um, away from a few of the wolves, but you can clearly see, um, for those who can't see, here's some wolves here, one here, and one here, 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 with the big one in the back. Just a few. Just a few. So there's, there's a seven total, is that right? Um, including the large one in the back, there are seven, yes. Okay, on the right-hand side of the camera, I can only see two. Is there actually a third together with that? So there are, um, on the, so there's two here, Yeah. and there's one over here, is that one being missed? Yeah, I can't see that. That's out of camera. I can see that guy. Yep. Great. Yep. So there's that. Um, yep. And then one over here and two here. Perfect. So okay, great. Great, great. That's where we're surrounding. Thank you for the uh, clarification. Perfect. All right. So Darian is going to move towards the house, towards, I guess, the church yep. a little bit. And more towards that lone wolf on its own, sort of in that direction. Yep. Like that. That'd be great. Okay. And he's going to cast uh, Ray of Frost. Okay, go ahead and make an attack roll. Ooh, we rolled pretty well. I've got a 19 less. Uh, that one is. Just checking my set. That's Sorcerer. Uh, plus 4. 19 plus 4. That's a 23, which definitely hits. So go ahead and roll um, damage as this beam of frosty light bolts out into this uh, creature right in the face. You got a one. <laughs> one point of damage. Uh, maybe not a beam so much as the little uh, of cold. Snowflake. Yeah, a little snowflake just kind of um, hits him, but it does uh, have its magical effect, which is slowing the creature's movement. So the snowflake bristles out and uh, slows the wolf a little bit as the frost clings to its form. Anything else from Darian? Nope, that'll be it. All right, so now it's Ismark's turn with Jennifer on deck. Ismark is going to, let me pull a couple pages out of my binder here, so I have it all in order. Okay, Ismark is going to uh, whirl about and draw a uh, short sword that he's got at his belt, um, and he's turning to the nearest wolf and charging. Without hesitation, he is engaging the enemy. All right, so he's going to take a swing um, with his, he gets two swings with his long sword against the wolf. All righty. Uh, both are going to hit with a total of, uh, it looks like an 18 and a 21. So two nice slashes right across. Dice down. Thank you, Claydew. Um, with two thick slashes right into the uh, sort of open area of the wolf, he was perhaps ready for trouble, have, having been attacked multiple times in a row, um, him and his family. That is going to be, well, pretty well. Um, gosh, how do we play this game again? It's been so long. I'm Eight. not sure either. <laughs> So that's going to be uh, 12 points of damage total. And with a slash, the wolf buckles before him and whoosh, blade straight into the back of its neck. Down it goes. And crashes down. That's it for his turn. And he's going to simply back up with the rest of his movement and hover over Irina protectively. All right, Jennifer, you're up with Irina on deck. Okay. 
so 30 feet, could I get to like right about here? Oh yeah. Okay. I'm gonna go here, and then would I be within 90 feet of these guys? Oh yes, definitely. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and try to cast sleep. Okay, great. Yeah, so you're targeting a point somewhere in there in that radius. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Sure. Here, I've got a few extra here. How many do you need? Five. Ah, uh, yes. Sleep. Yeah. Okay. Arithmetic. Uh, <laughs> 13, 15, 17. 17 points of uh, health that you can put to sleep. So, uh, as you as your magic blooms out, this sort of whispering shadow forms over the uh, over the wolves and you're certain that this effect would have affected normal wolves but these don't feel like normal wolves their eyes glow red for a moment and the spell is resisted okay do i have a voice action you absolutely do okay i'm gonna look panicked and just yell to the church okay nice Sorry for the no effect on the spell, but these are these are some special wolves. Here's what it is. All right, Irina draws a sort of ornate rapier um, that she has belted uh, with her, and is going to uh, whirl about. Um, and as as she does this, uh, Ismark kind of holds, puts her hand on her, and, and says, "No, to the church, like she said. Let us go." Um, and she sort of shrugs him off, and instead sheaths the rapier and pulls out a crossbow, and is going to fire at uh, the nearest wolf just past uh, here in the distance. Um, so she is going to take a shot. Hey, good roll. 20 total, so that's gonna hit. Alrighty, and that's going to be for eight points of damage on that wolf. So striking it sort of right in the sort of collarbone area. It look, It's looking hurt, but it's still standing. All right. Um, thankfully, the team is well, much, much readier than these active predators of the night, um, and uh, uh, that's it for Irina's turn. Mary Lou is on uh, up next, and she is going to ra uh, wade right into the thick of things and uh, rage, going feral and striking with berserk fury. She's going to go ahead and make her attack. She's also going to enter a frenzied rage, which lets her make an extra attack. So first attack on the one that hit, on the one that she, uh, was hurt already. Ooh, natural four. Unfortunately, is going to miss, but she gets a second attempt. Go for it. That's going to hit. All right, with a 16 total. That's definitely going to do it. And a d12 with her huge Hulk and Great. <laughs> rolled a 12. All right, so that's going to be something on the order of 16 points of damage, I think. So that is well enough to put down the already wounded wolf with a big two-handed overswing. Down the wolf goes without even a... Yelp of protest. What's odd is that the big black wolf in the corner seems to be just surveying the combat. This uh, this battle ensuing doesn't seem to be uh, stirring it into engaging so far. Can a little I ask bit you a question? Myself. Yeah, go ahead. How high are the the gates? Uh, the fence line is about uh, I'd say maybe five feet ish. It's more of a um, decorative or traditional wall line. Uh, around a graveyard rather than something that's tall and heavy. So is it like wrought iron or is it like a stone fence? Uh, these are stone. Okay. Uh, this is stone fencing. Gotcha. All right. Um, but there are the gaps as as uh, detailed um, yeah. by the, the spaces there. So okay. if there's spaces there, those are open spaces. And we can see this? We can see this? Yes, you can. Okay. Uh, that, that wolf is about the size of a horse. So very tall um, and definitely striking a menace uh, that the others maybe aren't. Okay, um, with that, Mary Lou is done with her turn. Nora, you are up with Cladu on deck. Um, oh, we all beat the wolves. Yes, the wolves would have rolled a five. <laughs> Nora's gonna come up a little bit closer so she's within 30 feet. Okay. And try something new and try to cast Turn the Faithless. Okay. And that is, uh, how does how does that work? Is a, they must make a wisdom saving throw, or they have to turn and move as far away from me as possible um, for, like, a minute. Okay. What is um, What kind of creatures can you target with that ability? Fae and fiends. Um, it is not a fae or a fiend. That's not a fiend? Not a fae or a fiend. Oh. Um, you draw your uh, your holy symbol, the bright sun, um, you. on your cloth, <laughs> and you present it, um, but... It seems completely unfazed, even as a little bit of flickering sunrise colors of nature uh, emit from the design. Okay. 
But uh, no additional effect, unfortunately. Can I ask you another question? Sure, go ahead. Is the priest still out here with us? Uh, no, Donovich left after the procession, but before the wolves came okay. in. So he returned quite sorrowfully to tend to his hoarse-voiced praying, um, and uh, that was when the wolves rolled in, just after he departed. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, Clidu, you're up. All right. Let's see. How so I'm way over there. How far can I get towards, like, Jennifer and Darian. How far can you get towards Jennifer and Darian? Uh, just with a normal move? You're 25 yeah. or 30? 30. Okay. So, so you can probably get up there. Okay. Can Maybe I be a little more in front of, I guess, Jennifer? Uh, more this way? Uh, Nicholas, I think you probably moved me a little more, just as a reminder, the foot. Oh yes, yeah, you were you were reduced. Um, yeah, uh, for those who don't know, uh, poor Darian, in a previous uh, turn of the adventure, uh, lost a foot um, in a grievous wound, so he's actually probably limped back a little bit, um, uh, and uh, that's that's his story. So we'll get to that in a little bit. All right. Um, okay, then I can move in front of like where Jennifer is, where I'm close, like within five feet of both of them. This. Why don't you move where you'd like to be? That way. I'm, uh, Right. No, my pretty gravestones. It's back, it's back, it's fine. All right. Um, I'm going to summon my spiritual weapon. Okay, Ooh, spiritual nice. weapon. Ooh, we're going to put Ooh, that. third level spell, or second level spell. Indeed. We're going to put that. Because it can't move very fast, so we're going to move that, like, right here. Okay. Conjuring the, uh, the weapon, what does it look like? Ooh. It would probably look just like the scythe. All right. So a big... Uh, sort of bone-hafted scythe uh, with a sort of symbol of two scales balanced on it, uh, worked into the head of the design, uh, floats sort of in a spectral, ghostly way of black and white shadows. Cool. Yeah, so that was my bonus action, and as part of summoning it, I can attack with it. Yeah, that's correct. So I will do so. Okay, go for it. Make an attack roll. That is going to be a it's wisdom, so that's a 15 to hit. 15 does hit. Go ahead and roll damage. Okay, that's a D8. Yeah. And I have my spell casting modifier. So that'll be seven damage. Seven points of damage, and that is the great one there. Alrighty. And I will hold my actual action to attack anything if it gets in range. Got it. Okay, so um, brandishing your own scythe and having it at the ready, mirrored to the one that you just used to slash into this creature. Um, it uh, is hurt, but still standing. All right, now it's the wolf's turn. Um, this wolf, obviously, is going to just simply engage with Mary Lou. Um, uh, these ones are going to uh, go ahead and move forward. Go ahead and make your attack of opportunity, or rather, your reaction attack. Okay. Um, against uh, the one that moved in closest was this one. But, um, is, is the spell not an action? It's a no, bonus. it's a bonus action. It's a really strong spell. Wow, so. that's really cool. Um, great, great effect there, so... Uh, it's natural, but not 20. It's natural. Um, unfortunately, as you swing, you sort of get a little carried away and sort of swing wide and have to be careful not to hit Jennifer, who ducks um, from your big swiping <laughs> swing of scythe. Um, this one, slowed by the frost of Darian's magic, just sort of crawls forward but doesn't quite get into uh, combat range. All right, uh, to battle then. The wolf uh, who is attacking Mary Lou. Um, that's a cockeyed roll. Let's roll that again. Um, that's going to be a total of... It'll be a total of 15, which I believe hits. Um, I don't have all of Mary Lou's stats nice and active. Uh, silly me, but... Silly you. Silly me. I've only got a few things to manage. So, but... Uh, okay, let's go ahead and do that. Woo! Uh, that is going to be 10 points of uh, piercing damage as it bites into her. Um, however, in her enraged state and toughened muscles, she flexes her burn-scarred arms and uh, has taken worse, so it only takes five points of damage. Um, so we'll just mark that here. Alrighty. Um, and she has to take a strength saving throw, which she has advantage while she's raging, um, against the creature pouncing on her. Um, oh yeah, she's fine. She's seen worse in her uh, tavern brawly kind of days. Okay, um... As for the other wolves, uh, they are attacking with pack tactics, kind of darting in and out, kind of going for the, the hamstrings, and then towards your throat uh, against Cledus, they're attacking with advantage. So the first one, with advantage, is going to be a 14 to hit. Does not hit. All right, you sort of take it on, it sort of clangs into the armor that you're wearing, but they don't find purchase against the steel. The second one, natural 19, so that's gonna hit you. Um, and that is going to be, uh, go ahead and make a strength saving throw too. 
All right, this is only five points of piercing damage. Uh, that is a 22. All right, five points of piercing damage and a 22. As you, as the creature like bites onto you, kind of like a, an army dog taking down a creature, you sort of shove it off with a big sweep of your hand and it uh, sort of bangs against the ground for a second. Um, all right, but it is all right. Um, so, damage taken, but otherwise that is their turn. So, Darian, you're up. Is Marcus on deck? Followed by Jennifer. All right, great. He's going to move forward towards the wolf that okay. is obviously closest to him. Probably the only one he can reach. Yep. And he's going to make his uh, his two two sword attacks against that. Okay. The intimidating image uh, ruined a little bit by his drag thump, <laughs> drag thump of his uh, oh, wounded leg. But he pulls the swords out, does a flourish, and gives him a go. Go, go ahead and roll. Uh, I got a 15 and a 10. Uh, the 15 hits, the 10 does not. Okay. Uh, six points of damage. All right, much more effective than the uh, snowflake as in the damage department. Um, you carve into the wolf and um, feels a little thicker um, than a normal wolf you who have hunted in the wilds before would know, but this wolf feels a little bit different. Um, so worthy of note. Uh, at this point, the frost has thawed a little bit, so it's acting normally. All right, anything else from Darian? Nope, he's good. Okay, Ismark's gonna uh, go next and then Jennifer's on deck. All right. Um, Ismark is going to uh, just stand in front of Irina and guard her. Um, actually, uh, she, they're going to together kind of take an action and move a little bit closer um, and simply ready themselves as he is sort of dragging her and she's sort of, no, stop, let me help them, uh, as he pulls her towards the, um, the church and the relative safety of the building. His eyes are fixed on the larger wolf in the darkness uh, there in the in the co copse of trees and mist back over here. Um, however, he's readying his action. His sword is at the ready um, to fight off whoever comes near. Okay, um, Jennifer, you're up. Uh, Jennifer, ever the hero, is going to back up. Can I get about there? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to cast Mage Armor. All right, backing up and uh, <laughs> making a sort of defensive gesture over yourself in a sweep. Um, a sort of lavender-colored robe appears over your uh, whole body, um, tinged with a little bit more shadow and darkness than you were expecting it to do. Um, but it uh, seems to clothe you in a protective guise. All right, um, that's it for your turn. Next up is going to be Irina. And she says, Ugh, get off, Ismark. Um, and she kind of takes aim and fires into the will, uh, into the into the dark, uh, into the wolf that is engaged with Darian here. Um, that's gonna hit. That is a natural fifteen. She's doing pretty well with her crossbow. All right, with another, she's got another six points of damage. Is gonna put that wolf down. So uh, distracted by Darian's um, attacks, this bolt comes in from the side and brings it down. Oh! All righty, um, that's it for them. They, uh, they're done with their turns, so Mary Lou is up next. Um, continuing with her ferocious rage, she's going to go ahead and make two attacks against this uh, creature just with the big strikes of the great axe. Um, well, a natural one and a natural six, unfortunately, are not going to score telling blows against this creature, even as uh, her big wide swings a little bit more reckless and the wolf dances out before leaping back in. Um, so no success there, unfortunately. All right, um, now from Mary Lou comes Nora with Clodu on deck. I'm going to go ahead and use both hands to try and hit this. Um, okay, you're going to have to move a little closer yeah. um, at the moment. We'll move you around here. But two hands with your long sword. Go ahead and go for it. That is a 20. 20 hits. Go ahead and roll damage. D10 for the two-handed. Oh, zero's a 10. Yeah. Uh, 13. 13 is enough with one big wallop. Whoosh, cleaving the wolf. Oh! Um, as you uh, carve right across its uh, malevolent gaze, all of these wolves' eyes are a little bit more flickery and red than uh, a normal wolf's would be. All right, and then you ready your shield for whatever else might come. All right, um, at this point, Clue, you're up. Okay. Um, we'll have him swing his scythe at the green-looking wolf that shouldn't have been damaged yet. Okay, yep, go for it. Yeah, the suspiciously green wolf. <laughs> it's really muscular. <laughs> That. Using what we got here for the, the models. Uh, does a 12 hit? Uh, a 12 uh, does not. The armor class is a 13. Sorry, buddy. Darn it. Uh, so it sort of Roll six, moves we'll out of your uh, your s sweeping scythe. Okay. Then I'll use my bonus action to move the spiritual weapon 20 feet this way. Yep, that's enough. Put it back here. 
and take a swing with that. Go for it. Hopefully this one hits. This will be on the damaged one. Got it. Nope, that's a, that's a natural three. Huh? All right, uh, <laughs> ducking and weaving over these blades, these wolves are sort of uh, like navigating a challenge course here um, and are able to uh, evade harm in this particular case. All right, um, now it's the wolves' turn. Uh, there's only a couple wolves left now. Um, thinned out the uh, the pack there, but they're going to attack with advantage again on Cladu. All righty, that's going to be a 17 to hit, the first yep. one. And the other one is going to be a 13. Does not. Okay, so like before, only one gets through. Go ahead and make a strength saving throw for me, please. Uh, that one is only going to be a 9. A 9, all right. This one <laughs> pounces on you and bites deep into you, knocking you prone. That's not good. And you take 7 points of piercing damage. Oh, all righty. Um, at this point, you see the, the black wolf in the back there kind of raise its head, sniff deeply, and then just walk back into the darkness. No. And disappear. No. Alrighty, um, and with that, Darian, you're up. Ismark is on deck. All right, can I, I can reach the other wolves from there, right? Uh, you'd have to 20, move, but yes, you 20, can 20 you can feet, I can make it there? Yep. Yeah, perfect. Is that one wounded, or is the other one wounded? Um, that one is the wounded one. Can you get me to the unwounded one, or do I not have enough? Uh, yeah, you can. Get, yeah, take me to the other one. Moving in the other direction, going round and uh, stepping over Darian's prone form as this thing sort of savages him. Go ahead. Yeah, clear here. Clear here. Uh, 17 on the one. That hits. And 8 on the other. Uh, 8 misses. Go ahead and roll damage for the 17. Uh, 6. Another 6. 6 points of damage. This was the unwounded one, correct? Yeah. Okay. So, whoosh, kind of carving into its backside, um, but uh, it's not enough to uh, fell it in a single blow, unfortunately. And then Pledu is, is down, but he's not knocked down or anything, right? No, he appears to be struggling and, and conscious. He's just been knocked down by the force of the pouncing beast. Okay, got it. Okay, Ismark. So as a verbal action, I'll just ask him how... I'll just say, Pledu, you okay? You need a good berry now? Not yet. Soon. <laughs> nice, I love Probably it. Probably soon. Okay. All right, uh, Ismark is going to continue attempting to drag um, Irina closer to the uh, the gatehouse there, uh, kind of with mixed success as she is clearly wanting to help her new allies, and he is clearly wanting to get her to safety. Um, but that is his turn. Um, that is going to be Jennifer uh, up next. Okay, so I am going to... Oh, gosh. Am I a coward? Yeah, I think she would try to go towards the church. Okay. Um, and then just just voice action, but like, run! <laughs> <laughs> All right, this uh, half-masked individual just sort of backing up with her robe and protection and just staring at awe and her friends who seem to be battling it out and just incredulously not fleeing from this combat. All right, um, next up is going to be Irina. Um, who says, no, we must fight them, and takes another shot with her crossbow. Two different types of people in the world. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, that's a 17 to hit. It's going to be at the uh, unwounded. Um, well, actually, both both are wounded now. Um, so it'll be the one on the right there. Um, and that's going to... Woof! Man, she's on fire with this crossbow. That's going to be another nine points of damage, which is enough to put that one down as well. All righty. She's taking care of herself. She doesn't need to... She doesn't need the team. She doesn't need the team. Yeah, so she's doing pretty well. All right, Mary Lou is up next. She says, I don't know about y'all, but I'm ready to be done with these wolves. Alabama, Alabama. Alabama, Alabama, <laughs> yeah. And Mary Lou has an accent for those of you at home. Uh, so she stows her, she's not quite enough movement to get to her uh, foe here, um, but she stows her um, great axe and pulls out a bloodied hatchet, uh, sort of with rusted blood on its side, and she throws it um, at the wolf there. She's going to do that. Um, that is going to be a hit with a total of a 12. Uh, oh, no, 12 misses. Armor class of 13. So unfortunately, whoosh, sort of whoosh, hurls into the darkness, um, and uh, she seems to sort of, ugh, kind of, her rage seems to fall from her, and um, she seems a little bit more exhausted and tired uh, than before. So it's that. Okay, um, unfortunate for her, but Nora, uh, you're up next. And I can't hit with uh, not without sprinting there. It's a little bit farther, so. Then I'm going to 
run up just a little bit and throw one of my javelins. Okay, go for it. Yeah, that's perfect. All right, pulling out a javelin. Go ahead and give it a shot. Twelve does not hit. The thirteen is uh, keeping these wolves, uh, this black wolf, safe, um, and uh, it stays standing. Okay, so that's that. Let's see. Oh, and we have this one go down as well. Okay, um, so that's that. So Cladu, uh, you're prone, and there's a wolf next to you, but the, the the pack seems to be thinning out. What are you doing? Okay, so it's not on me. It's just pushed me down. It's pushed you down, and then you've sort of wrestled it off. Okay, I will stand up. Okay, half your movement, and then I will go to town on this oh. wolf, and I knock everything down. Go for it. Make your attack roll. Okay. Big sweeping scythe attack. Maybe I can hit this time. You got it. Uh, yes, I can with a nat 20. Natural 20. Very nice. nice. Go ahead and roll damage. D10, and you double it. Yeah. Double the dice. That is going to be a total of 20 damage. 20 damage! Whoa. That is plenty with a big <laughs> sweeping nice. swipe. You just cut the wolf straight in half. Two pieces of halved wolf go spiraling into the darkness. And uh, that is going to bring us to the conclusion of our combat. Alrighty, so what's everyone doing? I'm just going to go grab a javelin. Okay, go ahead and make a survival check to see if you can pick it up. Um, Cladu will heal himself. Okay, so go for it. Mary Lou is going to retrieve her axe. 17. 17, yep, you get it, no problem. Yeah. Name's dirty, but undamaged. Alrighty. Um, at this point... Uh, Ismark is sort of dragging Irina. He's like, come on, Irina. They're done. Let us all get out of here before the devil returns with more. And she's like, all right, come on. Let us go. But we cannot leave everyone behind. Come, come, everybody. Back into the church. And quickly, she's kind of gesturing for everybody to return to the safety of the uh, church space as before. Yeah, and the direction the, the big wolf came from, there's just more forest in that direction? That's correct, yes. Um, on the outskirts of this sort of a table are forest and um, the uh, thick fog and mist that you have come, unfortunately, accustomed to here in Barovia. As I'm walking towards the church, can I, like, check out the out of that Darian's going to... Okay, yeah. Um, go ahead and make a perception check. What's Darian doing? Sorry, there's a little lag. Uh, Darian's going to look at the dog that's closest to him, one of the wolves that's closest to him, just to see if he can identify what's different about it. Okay, um, go ahead and make a nature check. Twelve. Twelve. Uh, the wolf's eyes seem normal. Okay. Darian? Also twelve. Also twelve. Um, hard to tell. It was maybe something about their demeanor, but um, nothing physical that you can uh, diagnose or identify. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. So he'll, he'll slowly make his way back to the church then. Okay. All righty. So the team makes their way back to the church. And we're going to just go ahead and spread the team out here and like that. I'll collect our uh, fallen here. You guys did well. Help that uh, everyone was aces on their initiative. So oh good job gosh. there. I did not think that it was going to go that well. Yeah. Nice, <laughs> nice job, team. I didn't think a 10 would be the one. <laughs> Um, alrighty, so at that case, uh, in that case, um, you guys returned back into it, and um, Ismark has sort of got his sword still out, um, and he's sort of ra rattling his hand against, the, ha the hand is sort of rattling against the, uh, the door um, to the church, and sort of wrenches it open, um, and is almost practically like pushing Irina inside while covering the exit. Um, he's like, inside, let us all go, inside, inside, now. Um, so everyone's uh, entering the church, is that right? Yeah. Okay, so I'll uh, go ahead and uh, put this in a little bit of a quieter situation here. Um, so, with that, um, the team returns to the church as before. Um, here in this space, it is a rather sad and sorry arrangement. It is a church that you have seen before in your introduction to um, Donovich and the unsettling noises from his basement. The church space is a wreck. The entrance um, that you guys made your way back to um, opens up to an, uh, a space kind of adjacent with pews turned over, crushed with claw marks and bite marks all over them. Um, it is a shambles of rubble and desolation. Um, just past the sort of altar space, which also shows sign of crack and wear, um, there is a single bell rope um, that dangles 
uh, unused recently. Um, and there, sitting uh, or kneeling before it, um, is, of course, uh, the priest himself, Donovich. Uh, and again, you hear his, his, his hoarse voice just, please, please, please. And he's over and over praying in a uh, pained way. Um, and uh, a little bit later, you hear sort of a, Father, I'm hungry! Coming from beneath the, um, the floorboards of the church. Um, and Donovich sort of winces at the sound, um, but otherwise continues his monotonous prayer. Um, Irina and Ismark, uh, Irina seems more concerned by this circumstance and um, looks to uh, Donovich and then to Ismark, and Ismark seems more concerned again with Irina and says, come, we must all go, we must return, this is the time to depart, we must head to Velaki or somewhere else, Kretsk, anywhere for, but here. Um, and uh, Irina says, no, Ismark, I'm not leaving this, pe this town, this village. This is where our father raised us. This is where all of the people here need our help. We cannot just abandon them. I, will, I do not deny that this is a troubled time, but with our allies' help, perhaps we can set the, the village straight. Um, and she kind of looks around to you imploringly. But before anything else happens, uh, Ismark kind of stamps his foot in frustration and says, Irina, there isn't a time to help everybody who needs it. Everyone in Barovia needs help. But the best thing to do is to get you to safety. That will help everyone here. Um, and he, he also is sort of kind of crowding her a little bit. Um, and she's, she's shoving him back. And uh, he says, look... I am not letting you out of my sight. If you can convince the, uh, your friends to help out, then so be it. But we must make haste. We're leaving within the hour or two, with or without your friends. It is morning time, and even already we are being attacked. How will it be if we can make it a net? How is it that we can make it another night? And he's kind of looking at all of you, like, help me convince her. Uh, Arita, what would you have us do if you want us if you want to stay? Look, they, there's, there is so many who need our help here. The lady crying, Mary, with the townhouse. There are uh, those who we passed on the way over. So many who need help. And uh, Perry, Perry Wimple from the, uh, the merchant store. He has been helping me. Seek him out. At least he will be able to direct you. He's been helping me get some supplies to some of the villagers. But I have been, from the attacks on our home lately, I have been unable to... Uh, assist him any further. Uh, please, do something. I mean, what's going on with Donovich here? And Donovich doesn't even reply, the priest doesn't even register that his name has been spoken. Um, he's continuing his litany. Um, and uh, Ismark is saying, uh, is sort of looks over to Donovich and says, thank you for laying our father to rest. Please, can you help convince Irina that somewhere else is safer? And for a moment, you know, uh, for a moment, um, Ismark lays his hand on, on uh, the priest's shoulder and he kind of shrugs it off. Um, and then he kind of breaks his, his chanting prayer and just says, The Abbey, the Abbey in Kretsk, holy ground. Perhaps the best for us to, for her. But my son, my son, please. Please, Father, please, great Lord of the morning and sunlight, please restore him. Give him deliverance from this terrible fate. And he returns to the litany that he has been chanting all the while. And with this, um, what is everyone doing? Everyone's sort of looking around. Clearly some multiple um, agencies and interests at play here. So what's everyone doing? Is there a door that heads downward? Yeah, so um, just to set the scene a little clearer for the, the um, space, there is um, the side entrance from which you guys have uh, made it, or the back entrance from which you guys have made it, uh, through to this space. Um, the church building is a little bit larger than the model that I have representing on the field. Um, but there's this sort of broad, wider hall space where these wrecked pews are, and everyone's standing and Donovich is praying. Um, but from whence you entered the first time to seek the priest's aid in burial, um, there was a sort of long hallway with four doors all shut. 
um, that uh, led to it. There are no obvious spaces leading to below, um, but um, that is the outline of the building. So you are seeing it now. It's all rather dimly unlit. Um, so that is the situation here. So Darian's going to go and investigate and try and find a, a uh, pathway down to the basement. Okay, go ahead and make an investigation check. You're probably going to have to uh, rifle through a little while. Um, eight. Eight, okay. Um, it, you're shuffling through different debris and kind of pushing across, uh, you know, moving the uh, pews and so forth. Um all around and uh, navigating your space, uh, navigating the space, and you kind of push one of the doors open, and it appears to be a, a wrecked bedroom with a little bit of a bookshelf um, space, a couple books on it, but otherwise nothing major. Um, no, uh, um, no obvious staircase down in this room or in the main entrance that you were able to detect, but you're not super confident. What's everyone else doing? Uh, I'm going to turn to Ismark and what what is this this holy place? I am uh, less familiar with um, all of the holy places. I am not sure that the uh, the great gods have uh, much faith in us left for our sins. But um, it is said that the Abbey of uh, uh, I believe it is the Abbey of Saint Markovia um, resides in the village of Kretsk, and it is rumored that. Uh, it is not as bad there. I'm not sure Kretsk is far, um, if you look on the map that I uh, afforded you, but it is a far distance from where we stand now. Many days travel, but Velaki is on the way, and perhaps we can seek aid there, at least refreshment, and then journey all the way to Kretsk. Um, and this, uh, Irina says, No, I am not going too far where I cannot help. Uh, at least I am not going until further things have been addressed here in town. But Irina, you staying is the reason why everyone's in danger. I cannot be sure of that. None of us can be sure of that. But this isn't just danger that needs to be sorted. There are people who are low on supplies, people who are needing food and warmth. These are our responsibilities now that our father has passed. We have inherited his responsibilities and someone needs to take charge. We argue and squabble and do not help one another. And the swindlers and spies among this place thrive while the rest of us suffer. This cannot be resolved simply by me leaving. Could you give us a moment to discuss amongst ourselves privately? Very well, but please make haste. You have seen how things turn so quickly here. Joseph. Are many of your wolves that size? Like that big one we saw in the corner? <laughs> uh, Ismark kind of replies to this and says, Unfortunately, I have seen many of this size. Not as frequently as these more usual-sized pests, but yes, the great wolves of the forests do roam and attack in packs as well. I best hope that this is one of the reasons that I hoped to procure your services in... Uh, Escorting my sister to safety. Okay. So Jennifer's gonna go and like gesture for everyone to join her and go towards maybe a, a couple of pews kind of far away from. I assume they're like up towards the altar. Yeah. So she's gonna head towards like the, the entrance of the church. Mm -hmm. what, what do you What do you guys think? Like this is not what we came here for. I don't know if we can really make progress just by staying in a city waiting for people to come to us. I mean, how will this help us find Madam Eva? Uh, Mary Lou speaks up and says, I, Now, I don't know about y'all, but uh, I'm thinking that uh, we better at least help some people while we can, but maybe we can at least see this, uh, this periwinkle bloke and uh, go from there. But... I also think we should be heading out pretty soon before things turn sideways again. Yeah, I agree. I think we should help people, but I don't think we should stay here forever. <laughs> so, should we have so should we have Irina and Ismark go to go on ahead of us while we help people here or help people here first and then we all go on together? While this is going on, um, you can see that there's a continued argument between Irina and Ismark. Um, and uh, 
Ismark uh, is sort of continuing his verbiage and, and uh, directive um, in getting Irina to safety. Um, but Irina sort of is seeming to, and you're kind of catching the odd word now that you're a little bit farther away, but it's getting heated. Um, and she says, Brother, we must rise to the occasion. One of us must remain and take the title from Father uh, and rally these people. We can at least, be, at least we might, if I am to go, then you must stay. These folk have proven their worth in battle and proven that they can distract them while I take care of the bad guys with my crossbow. And so there is certainly a, a way that we can make it to safety. And you, I will not go anywhere unless one of us stays and inherits father's responsibilities. It is time for you to set aside your fanciful story of heroically slaying the devil yourself. We, we need allies. We need to bring the world, our village back together. We need to bring Barovia back together. And we will be able to defeat the devil together. So this is, this is what you're hearing. And, and he kind of is stunned by the outburst um, at this point. But um, that's kind of what's going on there. Uh, Back to you, team. And, and just amongst the team, have we asked about Madame Eva? Because if we if go back in, going back to with Stanimir, he mentioned that he was banished from these lands, I think, by Madame Eva or by parts of their team. So she must be popular. We may be able to get some information about where she might be before making a decision. That's true. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. The other thought is that if um, Irina can rally the, the villagers, they might all be willing to come with us as a troop. And our objective could change, provided that it helps us find Madame Eva, but um, we might be able to escort maybe 15 or 20 villagers as a, as a defense team, which could be both lucrative and help put us in the good graces of these, these people, which might help Madam Eva look upon us favorably when we do meet her. So as Darian's speaking, Jennifer is just rubbing her temples. And then it's like something he said. She's just like, okay, perfect. We'll help him then. So good? Sounds to me. How do you want to help? <laughs> okay, so <laughs> Jennifer will walk up back up to um, Irina and Ismark and be like, Irina, I recognize that we're not getting anywhere by arguing. What would you have us do right this moment? The first step is probably reaching out to Periwimple. He assists at Bildrath's Mercantile. He is a kind-hearted, uh, somewhat simple giant, but he, uh, he will help and has been helping me. Beware of his uncle who runs the store. He is a... Uh, Swindler of the worst sort, and uh, keeps many prices and treasures unfairly. However, uh, including my brother's sword, and Ismark's like, Irina, you didn't have to tell her that, tell them that. Um, and Irina says, speak to him. He might be able to at least give you some supplies to deliver to a few of the most who need it. Um, so that might be the first place to, uh, to start, although I think our friend here... And she kind of gestures towards Donovich. Might need a little assistance as well. Uh, his son seems quite uh, troubled down below. Um, and, uh, you know, from uh, almost on cue, you can hear. Uh, um, you hear again. I can smell you! So if I understand you correctly... Once we're, we help out some people in this area that are in need, you'll be willing to, to agree to your brother's wishes and go on to a safer place, at least for the time being. Yes, at least for the time being, prolonged that he, provided that he also remains. I'm going to look at Ismark. I mean, what are, what are the, what's the likelihood of getting all the villagers to come with us? And at this, you Ismark, Ismark kind of uh, so steps in and says... These people are not soldiers, uh, at least not yet. Um, and he kind of looks and sighs at, at Irina and says, fine, I will stay and I will work on improving things here and perhaps training some who are able. 
but we are not a fighting force. Many of our people have died, many of our people have fled, and uh, there are a few who trap and range uh, as scouts and hunters, but not enough for a fighting force that would be significant. I know that recently the Ten Pilgrims left also to head towards Kretsk. Perhaps if we could reach out to them or connect with them, they might be better served as more vigilant assistants. Oh, How many the, people do you think camera remain? Camera, Sarah's getting a call. Um, um, so, sorry for the, the big S there. Um, but uh, what was that there? You've got a big vision of my face. Yeah. Um, how, how many people are left in the town, approximately? Uh, I am not certain. We have not been leaving the house recently after all of these attacks the past few nights. But it is safe to say that there are fewer than were before um, the three nights ago. People continuously go. Um, one second here. Um, it looks like, oh, we'll fix it on break. You get a big Michael face um, <laughs> for the moment. <laughs> and things have uh, switched around. Um, so there it is. Um, but with that, um, yeah, it seems like you're getting a clear, oh, oops. Um, you're getting a clear picture of, uh, they're not totally certain. Um, but, uh, a few hundred were here, uh, in better times. It is not clear to say, um, after the revolt, things went a little less, so. So does he, does he think there's like 50 people here, or like a hundred, or like a dozen? Is more a than a dozen and more than 50, but okay. perhaps a hundred or so at best. Left. So more than we could realistically protect, trying to yes, make Yes, that is down. certain. Okay. Do you think okay, we'd be safe here? Maybe we go visit the shopkeeper? Um, Ismark responds to Jennifer asking about being safe, and he says, I have... I am thinking that uh, my safety is not as much of a concern, and uh, resources will be spent attacking my sister. That is why I want you to uphold your oath to protect her and keep her safe. But I will do my best with what I have here. And I can make a few more preparations and gather those who are willing to stand in defense. Okay. <sighs> well, where do we start? <laughs> I suppose we could go well, to the shop. Do we want to try and investigate and find the priest's son and see if we can offer some aid or do we want to go and visit the town and, and try and find some supplies and get stocked up? Well, we're here now. Might as well see what can be learned from our current situation. I'm also so not Dan eager to go back outside immediately because I'm not sure if you guys saw, but there was giant wolves that attacked. And instead of running, we engaged. Do you remember? Are you afraid of wolves, Jennifer? Are you not? I'm, I'm used to the wilderness. Wolves are our everyday companions to me, even though these ones looked and felt a little bit off. You must have a couple screws loose then. <laughs> he sort of looks at you and shakes his head and goes, <sighs> I return the shake. <sighs> Maybe we can see if, if we can talk to Donovich at all and see if he can tell us anything. I know he's in a bit of a state. I'll do that if you guys want to start poking around and looking in the rooms. Yeah, Darian will keep looking for a door that heads down or some way of getting down. Okay. Um, go ahead and make a in an investigation check with advantage, because presumably the rest of the team's probably helping you, unless, Clitter, you I haven't heard from you or Nora yeah. very much. What are you guys up to? I would, I would help Jennifer I'm with be Donovich. Look. Okay. Yeah. yeah, go ahead and roll. Uh, oh, you're going to help with Donovich? Yeah. Okay. And you're going to help look? I'm going to help look with um, Darian. Okay, so Darian, yeah, you are rolling with advantage, and then you I got two... an 18. Okay. I'll get to you in a second. Um, you two go up to Donovich, um, and again, he's sort of <laughs> just hoarsely praying um, and uh, uttering a few different words of, of uh, request to uh, his deity. What uh, are you guys doing? So, Donovich, um, what's, uh, why do you have your uh, son locked up, and why does he sound so, so hungry? <laughs> Dora, Dora, my son, my son, and he went, 
He joined the Mage's Rebellion. They stormed the castle. And none of them returned. The Mage fought the devil. Many saw. And many saw that Mage be cast down after magic was cast. Lightning raged and thunder cracked. But he was cast down and never seen again. I thought Doro dead, but one day he returned to me, emaciated, clawed and fanged, hungering, hungering like they do. And now, now I pray that he can be saved, can be cured. He hungers not for a meal like you and I, but for blood, blood of the sentient. Please, help him if you can. You know some magic. Help him if you can. My son. My son. So, I don't know too much about the Dawnfather, but I would assume that his, if he is to work a miracle, it should be in the sun, rather than locked below ground in a crypt? There is no sun in Morovia. The morning light has, the Dawnfather has, Abandon us. Some say. And I cannot give up hope for he is Doro's only hope. And I believe him locked below. Not for for any reason other than the safety. For Doro wants to return to the castle from when she came. Ravenloft. And he hungers for the safety of others. I must keep him safe. Keep him where he is locked below. Beware if you go below. Please help him. Father, did you ever feed him? No, I dare not do that. I do not want him to give in to his unholy impulses to worsen his state. And, Father, forgive me for, for being so blunt, but if there's no way to help his physical form. Maybe you can help his spiritual form and we can... <clears throat> and Jennifer will just look at Quidu. You're better at this. <laughs> so, what, uh, what she's trying to say is, is if we can't stop him from turning into some sort of monster, maybe it's best we send him on his way but while he's still human? Yeah. No! No! There must be a way. There is a way. Please, help me. I can keep him restrained. I can keep him here. Speak to him if you must, if you must learn more about his condition. But please do not. Please, I cannot let you do anything. I will die before you let, I let you kill him. Okay. So, did you, do you have an idea? Because clearly... Perhaps the abbot, the abbot of Markovia, of, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the abbey in Markovia, the abbot is said to be a, a holy one, who can work miracles. Seek him out. I dare not go alone, but if you are traveling there with Irene already, then perhaps you might be able to retrieve something that could help him. We'll try. We'll so, try, Father. before we go, just so we have a better idea of what's going on with him, um, is there any way we could take a look at him? Like, from a distance, but just see him? Yes, yes, he's down below. Down below, in the, the farthest door. Uh, on the right, where's your entry? And uh, those of you who were searching uh, have pushed through the, the different doors and have found there is indeed a door, a trap door in the floor um, on in one of the rooms. Uh, all of the rooms are, are likewise messy, cobweb, cobweb and dust kept, um, but they seem to be uh, equal, uh, but for the one that had the books, um, and this one that has the trap door. Um, and uh, now that you're in that room, uh, you can hear the occasional cry and just say, please, please, just a tiny bit, please. Oh, shall we go, shall we go, um, look? Maybe I... some of the books, we can, we can thumb through some of the books and see it. Books. Didn't Nicholas have a room with books? Uh, yeah, uh, Claudio <laughs> might not know, know of it just yet, but uh, when Darian and Nora were investigating, they found, um, uh, a room that had books um, in 
near an end table uh, near the bed. So that would be uh, the source of those books that were being referenced uh, there. And Donovich, before we uh, head down, um, just as a by the by, there uh, there's some wolf corpses out in your uh, cemetery. Just so it's not a surprise when you head out there. Corpses, 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 corpses. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. Uh, he, I thought he, I said something. He though. just seems he just like the word kind of echoes in his in his head but and in his words, but he doesn't even seem to register much else. Like cl- clearly this guy is not in a right way after what's happened to his son. And you said his son's name is Daru? Doru. Doru. Okay. Thank you. Alright. Nora. As you are padding through and exploring the various um, spaces of the church and the areas held within, there's a section that you sort of clear away some of the debris, just looking for a trapdoor in one of the rooms. And you see that it's open to the, to the outside a little bit. And there's a small section of grasses and... and um, a little bit of flowers that are, are, are sort of a dark violet color that are blooming amidst the vines that are kind of creeping into this space as nature starts to collect in, on the house. And in some ways, it reminds you of some happier times of sunlight and warmth and laughter, roaming lands with a trusted companion and teacher. You think of meadows and sunshine seeing this little nature scene, and it strikes you starkly. And as you're kind of looking at it for a moment, Darian's off limping around and searching, (laughs) you hear a voice that echoes in the vaults of your mind. Renew your own light to be a light to others. Let your anger abate and cleanse this land of the twisted, the crone, and the fallen lord. Swear to uphold hope and bestow it to others. Swear and pledge to restore balance where the strained, where the stained have wrought sorrow in holy places. Bring safety and peace back to the quiet forests and fields of this land. Do you so pledge? Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Darian, as you're searching. Out of doubt, she's just like, I'm in. <laughs> Darian, as you're searching and you're like, oh, I think I found the trap door. You just hear behind you. Oh heck yeah! <laughs> having not heard and everything, like and having heard not any of the other voice or anything like that, you just hear uh, that, um, and you hear um, the you hear the voice again, um, and it says, "Your faith grows wider, and stronger, deeper, and darker. Take this to the Lady of the Fates. Redeem yourself and banish the twisted, and the vines kind of." kind of recede and um, bloom around a particular small object and you bend down and sort of reach it around, reach around and kind of root around and you pull another card out from this. This is the card and you read it. It is the monk card here. Um, so I'm showing the camera. but uh, And you have also um, accepted the Oath of the Ancients. Uh, as part of your uh, oath there. And as quickly as it came, the voice and the scene kind of diminish, and the fog and gloom kind of roll back in over this little tuft of nature. Um, And in some ways it gives you hope that perhaps not all holy places have been abandoned here, but also you see how much work you have ahead of you, and even more mysteries to unravel. With that... um, I believe we're going to go ahead and head to a little bit of a break, get some food, take a bathroom break and stuff like that as the team moves forward with what they do. Hopefully, um, fairly soon, we should be joined um, probably in the next half hour or so by Mary Lou's actual player, who does a much better southern accent than I do, um, which is Megan. So uh, we'll go ahead and cut to a break here. So we'll be back in 10 minutes or so.
Okay. Let's go ahead and do this. We're going to head on back. I'm going to swap things around to hopefully get... Not good, actually, for now. One sec. Do that. Um, okay, so... Um, returning here uh, as we head back from break, uh, Michael's probably just coming in in a little bit, um, and we've got food for our bellies here, um, even if the poor people of Barovia have less. Um, well, I don't have tasty strawberries like these. <laughs> tasty, tasty berries. I don't think they're going to have nachos. Oh, yeah, no nachos, no berries. But anyway, um, so uh, having completed um, Nora's Oath of the Ancients and the team uh, preparing to investigate. Is there anything else anyone wants to do um, before we go forward with that? Um, while we're up above still, um, presumably Darian and Nora have shared the location of the trapdoor with the leading down below um, with the remaining members of the team um, who do not know of it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and clear away this. Break. Um, have we looked at the, the bookshelves yet? Uh, you have not, but if you would like to, you can go ahead and do that. Yeah, take a look see. Yeah, go ahead and make, um, well, you don't need to roll. There are two books there, and I'll, I'll get to them in just a hot second. Um, I only prefer my seconds cold. <laughs> seconds cold only, please. Okay. Just get those out of the way. New set. Boop, boop. Um, or rather, just not this set. Um, I say, wow, this is a pretty big uh, basement. Yeah, pretty big basement. Um, yeah, so uh, we'll start using these when we're ready to carry on with the basement section. Um, just to get a sense of indoors only. We don't use walls here for this, the sake of the camera and all that. Um, these two aren't here. But, no walls, no savings. Okay. So, uh, get going. Let's go ahead and do this. We're going to head on back. I'm going to swap things around to hopefully get... Okay, so... Um, yeah, we'll uh, build the rest of this here in just a second, but the team's going to be heading down below. But first, um, before we get to what's below, um, Cladu, uh, first a message from Cladu, uh, who found a couple books that he wanted to investigate. So um, going into the room, which seems to have a few extra um, little markers that indicate that this might have been Donovich's room. Um, the, the sheets are stained and... Un not well kept at all, um, and it doesn't look like he's spent much time here recently. But um, you find the books on the shelf. Um, there are two, um, as well as while you're there, um, the the ca this sort of cabinet that you're at here. Um, there's there's a few other little knickknacks and things. Now that you're looking around, um, there appears to be a tinder box, um, and uh, what appears to be a, a wooden box with. Um, uh, some kind of uh, there's another a shut wooden box, um, as well as two well worn books. Um, the first is Hymns to the Dawn, and the second is The Blade of Truth: The Uses of Logic in the War Against Diabolist Heresies as Fought by the Olmist Inquisition. Could you uh, repeat that book again? <laughs> you didn't catch that the first time. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that is um, The Blade of Truth. The uses of logic in the war against the diabolist heresies, as fought by the Olmist Inquisition. Okay, so you can, if you want to peruse them now, or you can um, yeah, just give them a perusal. Okay, just a quick perusal over it. Uh, the first, The Hymns to the Dawn, seems to be a volume of chants to the Morning Lord. Not too surprising there. Um, I'm trying to get my music to sort itself out. Uh, the Uses of Logic, Blade of Truth one, um, appears to be kind of a weird book that mixes a bit of logic exercise with sort of lurid descriptions of fiend-worshipping cults. Um, so, kind of an unusual approach to some of the... Um, specify how to use logic against these cults? It's less of a, it seems more of like a, um, not in a, like, not in anything other than an argumentative way. Um, okay. it's, it's not very much in the sense of like, it doesn't seem to be, at least from what you're picking up from an initial reading, that this is something that like 
yeah, this I could use this to defeat a cultist kind of deal. Um, Worth a shot. It seems more of more of like a theoretical exercise slash religious, um, almost like a religious intervention that you might use to deprogram someone who's been programmed by this cult deal. Hmm. That could be quite useful. So Jennifer is being very obnoxious and reading out loud over your shoulder <laughs> as you're thumbing through the books. I love it. I'll tell you. I'm really tall, 5'11 ish. Okay, Claudia's 5 feet, so yeah. Okay. <laughs> Looking down. down. <laughs> um, speaking of which, do you know anything about this? Um, the, oh gosh, what is it? The Black Mages? Hold on. Mages Rebellion? Uh, I mean, <clears throat> only what you heard with, uh, with Donovich. Sounds like they went to stand against our, uh, our pal who wrote the letter in the, in the castle. And they got uh, thrown down. Yeah. Although it's a little weird that they never found uh, the the big mage's body, because that's uh, in this land where the dead don't tend to rest. That's a little scary. Yeah. Agreed. So we can we can ask uh, uh, Danu or Doru. Doru. Doru about uh, about that. Sounds like he went and followed the mage. And that's when he fell in this uh, this pickle he's in. Well, I hope he'll be agreeable, but I highly doubt it. Uh, with, with folks like that, working with, we'll say, addictions. Uh, bargaining. Start with bargaining. Okay. I'll leave you to it. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Just like the wolves. <laughs> <laughs> Just like the wolves, yeah. Did you say that? I did, <laughs> Well, when, when one is approached by a pack of wolves, you don't just automatically go and fight it. Just like when one is approached by a skeleton rider, you don't just go ahead and attack it. Okay, first off, religion on the second one. The first one, though, there's more wolves than people where I come from. You just gotta deal with them, like any other pest. She's, like, looking at her nails. Well, you're braver than I am. Or stupider. Eh, it's all about whether or not you live. All Fair right. Fair enough, and here we are. Likely a matter of hindsight, probably. Um, so, is the uh, sorry is the team uh, heading down um, into the into the depths below with? Uh, was there anything you said there was a tinder box, other knickknacks in the room? Uh, a tinder box and a couple closed boxes. Jennifer will go kind of open up some of those closed boxes. Okay. Um, they contain candles. Um, there seems to be about. Uh, eight total left between the two boxes, but plenty of space as if there were more that have been used up. Mm, okay. She'll just close the box. Okay. Sounds good. Um, all right. So, uh, heading forward? Yes. Unless, Nora, you wanted to do anything else? Nora's just, like, smiling as big as ever, and you guys have, like, rarely ever seen her smile. So, <laughs> it looks really weird on her face, out of place. Um, but she's just like flipping this card back and forth and kind of just like lining up things in her hands um, Just as she's standing there not really paying attention to anything that you guys have been doing for like the past few minutes All right, so who's leading the it's a five-foot wide stairway um, as you guys open the trap Open the trap door uh, who's who's leading the charge down below? And so Darian and Nora were the ones exploring that first Okay. Oh, just as a, as a heads up, um, yeah, so his son's name's Doru, and he's probably what sounds like maybe a vampire, just so you guys know, and she'll relay the information that the priest told about the um, battle mage and storming the castle and everything. My money's on a ghoul, but we'll, uh, we'll or see. Or a ghoul. You would know better. We'll find out. But just be, pre- be prepared. Werewolf. <laughs> After those wolves, that's all I had in my head. <laughs> okay, so heading on down, then. Um, sort of, or in your case, um, as you uh, uh, limp down with your um, your stub uh, and uh, set up there, um, you guys make your way down into pitch darkness in this space. It's almost too dark um, for the space that it should be in. It's a, it feels cramped and crowded. This sort of undercroft basement area. And it's very quiet in the space down below. And then you sort of hear like a kind of rattling of a chain going taut. Um, and you, Darian, with your dark vision, would be able to see 
uh, the grayed outline of an emaciated, thin character of, of young age, maybe early 20s, thin, like, patchy, missing spots of, of straggled brown hair, um, and um, uh, you see already sort of claws extending from the hands in a uh, sort of menacing way, outstretched towards you, but uh, a collar around his neck, um, and uh, restraining him to uh, a post um, that has been set in the back of the basement area where he is uh, restrained. And he's uh, kind of right up against it. Um, and he's, he's, just a tiny bit, just a tiny bit, a few drops even. I can smell it, it smells so good. So this is what can everyone discern, comes down the stairs to. Can we discern what, uh, can we discern what's different about him? I mean, you can tell as he's opened his mouth, he's got fangs. Um, you know, where his canines are, they're really pronounced, um, at least a few inches, uh, like an inch or, or so longer than normal. Um, aside from that, he just looks like a st starving guy. Um, he obviously looks unwell. There's like marks, scratch marks and bite marks all over his body, um, where it seems like he bit and scratched himself, maybe, um, since they're in strange places. Um, in strange frequency, so he's got kind of crusted sores all over his body. Um, so yeah, I and mean, he's straining kind of right against the the, the thing. You, you know, you're worried for a second that he's going to throttle himself, um, but he sort of seems to kind of resettle, and then he kind of just does this sort of stalking motion, more spider-like than human, kind of crawling up against, and you see him slowly crawl up the wall um, on the opposite side of the uh, the post and he kind of just stays there up against the wall almost like a uh, with his legs bowed like a frog's when his eyes kind of watching you um which are like yellowish slits and um he's kind of peering at you in the dark and sort of <sighs> kind of making this wrestling rasping noise is the ground here dirt or wood or stone um it is a uh, dirt floor basement okay so darian's gonna cast create bonfire to okay. Enough light for the rest of the party to see. Okay. Uh, yeah. As as the um, bonfire crackles forth uh, from Darian's magic, um, sort of appearing with a sort of silvery bluish tinge to it, um, the fire illuminates the space and the poor wretch held within. As you see Doru there, um, poised like predator and prey there on the wall, continuing with that rasping noise. And so you all smell so good. Too. Just a drop! Just a drop! Jeez, you've seen better days. So Darian, who's had an extra second or two to see him, says this, says that he looks well beyond my ability to, to influence or to help. I think we may need someone particularly powerful to help him. Does he look more like a ghoul? Like, does he look similar to a ghoul that we've seen? Um, go ahead and make a religion check. Can I borrow a d20? Mm -hmm. Oh, gee. Uh, that is going to be a 22. Um, you've seen ghouls before here in this land, and he does not appear to be a ghoul. Um, not the same kind of rotted uh, look, no sort of elongated... Um, face and tongue, or, or the, the stench of the ghoul. There's the stench of human waste down here, but no. Okay. Um, and he says, please, just a drop, just a drop, just a drop, just a drop. Kind of almost rocking back and forth on the wall. I got some bread, man. <laughs> <sighs> Warmth inside you. Warmth inside you. I like turn the bread, uh, like bright yellow light. <laughs> <laughs> just a drop, just a drop, please. And he lurches against, <laughs> against the the chain yet again, being sort of yanked by his uh, collar and leash. But you notice the post is sort of <laughs> as he's doing this, um, he's <laughs> and he kind of lunges again <laughs> and again gets pulled up short, almost like a dog reaching the end of its leash. Um, and he said. <laughs> And he's pacing on all fours, um, more animal than human at this stage. Just, and he's, please, 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 anything. Just a drop, just a drop. He's like an addict. Quadu, help. 
<laughs> hey, Doru. How's it going? Hungry, hungry, hungry. Have you ever been starving? Starving, so starving. Please, just a drop. Just anything will do. We're, we, we're going to help you. A little bit of blood. You have it. You have it inside you. <sighs> Please. Uh, we, we, want, we want you not to feel like this anymore. Not to so do I, so do I. If we can help you, would you help us? Yes, 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 yes. Anything, anything, please, anything. <laughs> How long have you been like this, Dora? <laughs> Drop, give me the blood. <laughs> Maybe, what, would it hurt if we gave him blood? Do I know that? You do not know. Mm. Mm. I feel like that's... <laughs> I don't know where it's going Go on for that it, one. go for it. Commit to the accent. That was a different one. I'm you got it. Commit to the right one this time. <laughs> So maybe maybe we don't give the uh, the pseudo vampire blood. We don't know what he is, but maybe it'd you know. be a little bit more agreeable, and we could figure out how to help him. So you guys, I think, did a little bit of uh, discussion about what your knowledge of vampires is, and you know a little bit of the information about this, and you know that um, generally individuals are are turned if they're drained dry, um, and then brought back. Um, and so, I remember you saying something about like multiple feedings could do. Yeah, multiple feedings things. over time. Um, so obviously not in control the same way like a legendary monstrous vampire is that you would know of having read about um, from your uh, sort of anti-undeath background from Kellen Vore. Um So that's about what you have right now. I'm gonna go check on the. Yeah. I'm gonna check on the thing. How long have you been hungry? There are a couple dead wolves outside. If we don't want to give our blood, we can maybe drag one of the wolves in here and keep him alive until we can figure out a better solution. Ah, Unless the flesh, blood is going flesh to of the sentient, flesh of the sentient, blood, blood, here and now. And he kind of, and this time, like, he's staying and straining and straining, and you sort of hear, like, a from the back of the chain here. Like, you guys get the sense that I'm less satiated or restrained further. It, he might pull himself free soon. I, seeing that, I'm going to um, cast sleep. Okay, um, go ahead and roll um, your uh, your effect there. Can I steal some? Mm-hmm. Okay, hold on. Uh, that is ten and seventeen. Seventeen. Um, Pouring in the magic, it sort of wafts over him, and for a second, his eyes kind of flicker. But you, as your magic reacts to him, you, you sense that this is a, a, a stronger creature than just what the emaciated, whatever darkness has been instilled upon him, has lent him some greater power. Um, you didn't reach the threshold. Okay. Mm. Uh, yeah, he's not as weak as he seems, guys. Can I try casting whole person on? Um. Sure, go ahead and so that is a what kind of save? Wisdom, I believe. Yeah. Wisdom save. Right. That spell slot. Uh, stat block. There it is. Um, you go ahead and uh, attempt to to cast it, um, but uh, he is not a person. So, so targets humanoids. So uh, unfortunately, your magic doesn't even imme- doesn't begin to. Um, so guys, this effect. isn't uh, you know. Full proof or anything, but my magic that works on people does not work on him. Which okay, carries right. with it some implications, such as that he's not human. Again, he's <laughs> and much more fairly pushing against the um, maybe the chains maybe here. We should maybe. probably leave. We guys. should probably leave. Yep. But he's gonna kill his father if we leave him like this. Oh, Daring, you can horse horse. you can mess with with dirt, right? Can you use dirt to reinforce the post? So at this yes, point, the, the chain at the end of, like, where the chain connects to the post is what's strained. Okay, gotcha. Um, just to so clarify. Rather than, rather than reinforcing the post, as he, Darian's going to sort of usher the team out and sort of say, come on, come on, come on, let's, let's try and leave, let's try and leave. And as, as he's sort of moving towards the door, he's pulling, he's going to cast Mold Earth. Okay. And he's going to pull the earth with him. Okay. To put in front of the door as he, before he closes it. Okay, so creating a little bit of, like, a earth mound to help help barrier yeah it, it makes it difficult terrain and, and to try and block the door he can put five feet five cubic feet of earth in front of the door okay is everyone rushing out is anyone staying behind mm-hmm. no nope, we're out okay so everyone rushes up <laughs> up the stairs creak, 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 creak. um and you guys you you 
mold the earth at the base of the stairs and shut the door at the top of the, um, the trap door space. Um, and he's like, no, no, please, just a drop, I'll tell you anything. Um, and again, you sort of kind of hearing this chain rattling and crashing. Um, and at some point you hear and everything goes quiet. Guys, we're ready. <laughs> I'm gonna cast mold earth on the other side of the door as well. Okay, so hang on. You're on. The, uh, you're upstairs now. This is wood. You okay. climbed wooden stairs. There's no earth to mold. There, there was okay. earth to mold at the base of the exactly stairs. Right? Uh, at the base of the stairs. You've gone through the trap door up the stairs. Shut the door. Now you're in the wooden church floor as well, uh, as before. So okay. um, that's where we're. we're the pews. Yeah, well, maybe we should barricade with the pews. Um. So uh, Ismar is sort of like. What is going on? What's what's happening? Oh, his son's gonna break free, and um, he's kind of not in a in a state that we want him to be out. If you get my my meaning. Uh, immediately he's like, Irina, stay back, and he quickly like grabs the nearest like pew and begins pushing and helping with you guys. Uh, thank you, Brandon, for the nacho delivery. Um, yeah, actually, let me make this a delivery. <laughs> uh, oh no, I just, I just meant thank you. That's all. Um, anyway, the um, and Irina sort of like, oh, you know, kind of irritated, but kind of gets back a little bit. Um, uh, Donovich immediately is like, no, 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 don't kill him. Don't kill him. Please don't kill him. Not my son. Please, please, I can restrain him. I can calm him just a little bit more. And he rolls up his sleeve and you see like all these little marks, um, um, uh, you know, on his arm. And he's like rolling up his sleeve and immediately like rushes towards the space um, where the trap door is. Um, so his intent is clear to feed his son. Clearly he's not. Clearly he's done before. Maybe I don't know. Do we knock him out? He's gonna go crazy if we do. We could try to hold him. Sven's gonna kill him. He's not gonna be able to have the control. He's off his chain now. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's everyone doing, team? We don't have too much time to react. I guess it's early morning. Are there windows that we can? Like see or light that we could put where he would come up, so he wouldn't. You'd have to walk through the light. Good question. Um, aside from a couple of the spaces, like the one that Nora found while she was um, sifting around in the one room, uh, most of the windows have been boarded up, and there aren't many entrances or exits that are um, open to the outside in any way. Uh, doors and all that kind of stuff. All of it's been boarded up. Remember that there's signs of attack and damage here in the ch in the church, just as there was with. Um, the mansion of um, the Kolyanovich family um, and the burgomaster. Um, What's the roof like? Uh, damaged and tattered, um, but not readily accessible either. Um, so, I mean, it's higher than what you can reach is what I'm getting at there. Um, I'll, I'll just so standing. Looking Should above, I... if, if something was to hit the roof, would that part collapse, do you think? You're not sure? Only one way to find out, really. Does it look like we could take so down Gary the roof? the team, he says, I think I have an idea. I can try opening the roof if you guys want to take a step back. That would let in enough sunlight, hopefully, to keep him in inside the trap door. There's no sunlight in Barovia. Well, enough light, as it were. <laughs> well, Nora's going to walk up to, like, the closest area to where if he were to come up, she's going to light that, use, cast light right okay. there on that area to try and hopefully at least give us a chance okay. <laughs> if he comes through there. Is there any garlic about? <laughs> Not that you see. <laughs> um, but you hear sort of a... I <laughs> um, and then for a little bit it all goes quiet and by the, the space of the trap door you sort of get this sort of kind of rattling scratching sound and Donovich is like rolling up his sleeve and present like ready to present his arm and he's like stay back stay back I will come him I will come him and he has his arm like ready to present to his son Irina it'll, it'll kill him <laughs> help us restrain him help us restrain him stop do not let him do this um, she's kind of behind Ismark who's pushing things around um, but uh Clearly, the situation is getting a little bit uh, out of hand for her taste, and she's wanting everyone to sort of be able to sort it out. Um, so she's kind of like, uh, restrain him, restrain him, quickly, restrain him. 
I'm up to restrain. So Darian is going to cast Friends. Oh. Okay. Please. Okay. You cast Friends. Um, and then he's going to try and try and hold him back and say, look, look, there's got to be another way. There's okay. There's got to be another way. And I'm going to try and persuade him slash hold him back. Okay. Make a persuasion check. You can go ahead and make a strength check there, uh, Cladu, to try and uh, hold him back. I uh, got some friends that we make it uh, with advantage, and I got a twenty-one. Okay. You get the sense that words are not exactly the best tool to reach this guy. Um, it was a great idea, but he's kind of crazy. Um, so he didn't regard you as an antagonist before, and he still doesn't entirely. But he's going to do whatever he can for his son, and it seems like it's not. At this point, with that high of a role, you get the sense that you're now friends with an insane person. Um, like he's clearly not with it. He, he, there's, there's his son is his world, and his world is a broken place. Um, he says, "No, I can heal him. I can heal him." What did you get there, uh, Cladu, for the restraint? Sixteen. Sixteen. Um, yeah, that's enough to restrain him. The big burly dwarf, kind of wrapping your arms underneath his. Um, and kind of holding him back. You kind of have to lean a little bit because he's taller than you. Um, I'm used to it. But, uh, yeah, he's sort of, no, no, please, my son. My son, feed him. Just a drop. He'll calm down and we can chain him back up more securely. I was going to walk up in front of him and just kind of like have her shield up and her sword ready just in case. Okay. Um, at this point, uh, Irina says, no, don't kill him. Perhaps we can as assist. It, can we? Can we at least try and and and, and feed him something? Is, was anyone hurt during the the battle? Is there someone who can yield a little bit of blood? Does blood on swords count? It's like Norse looking at hers. So remember that that was wolf blood that you have on his. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. And you remember Dor saying that he wanted yeah. blood of the sentient. You got bit. There's no way I'm gonna drink my blood. Uh, at this point, Mary Lou says, "I got bit too, and I'll." donate to the cause, and kind of pulls, she kind of tears a bit of her, like, cloth that she's wearing, and she seems kind of, like, totally able to do it, but also totally nonchalant about it, and just, like, swipes, swabs her arm um, that has some blood on it from where she got bitten, and is sort of, like, wafting it, and then hands it over to um, Nora, you're at the front there, so mm -hmm. she'll hand it over to you. Um, uh, well, maybe this will calm him down. Give it a whirl. Okay. <laughs> and you're handed a, a bloodied Aaron's rag. Like, uh... And she's kind of just like, this is a Tuesday afternoon. The kind of like behavior um, with with her nonchalantness. Um, was it the door? Anyway. Um, does someone want to just check really fast? Um, please. Um, but yeah, you you have it ready um, there. If you want to, to you have the bloodied cloth. Um, okay. And from there, um, what is everyone doing? Doru, if we give you a little bit, will you will you calm down? And there's a st stunning, too quiet sound. There's no more cra rasping at the door. There's nothing else. Doru, we have blood here for you, if you cooperate. And all of a sudden, just <laughs> like in a shower of splinters, in force clearly beyond an emaciated young man, uh, Doru pushes up, and the two, um, the, the trapdoor comes hurling up. He's covered in dirt and mud. He seems to, his arms especially, he seems to have clawed away at um, Darien's um, little mound of uh, earth here. Um, and we have, uh, just in time for an exciting moment, we have uh, Megan, Mary Lou's care, uh, player, um, joining us here. So welcome, thank welcome. You, thank you for your very kind and generous donation of your blood oh, yeah. to the vampire. You're feeding a vampire. Well, <laughs> well, I listened to most of it, except the last few minutes where things happened, apparently. Yes, things have happened. Welcome, welcome. So catching up quite briefly and recapping for any of those who are following along at home. Um, there was a wolf battle. You guys won. Uh, you got a little bit injured and are exhausted from doing your frenzied rage. Um, but um, you cleverly thought to use your uh, a swath of, of cloth, swab swabbing your blood, um, to use to lure out slash satiate the now sort of escaped son of Don uh, Donovich the priest. 
uh, who uh, clearly is is begging for for blood. So no rush, no rush. Take your time. Um, it's all good. Um, you know we're 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 just resetting here really quickly for those at home. Thank you for bearing with us. Um, but all good. Um, part of uh, part of the schedule at the moment with uh, folks coming and going at different hours, but. Um, Doru has burst through the underground trapdoor that the team discovered and is sort of ah, scuttling forward, again, more spider-like than, than human, like a spider pursuing its prey on a table. Um, it immediately goes straight for the cloth that you're holding. Oh and just, yeah, he just, he bites and just starts gnawing and licking the whole thing. <laughs> the whole thing just continuously. Um, just continuously, um... Uh, continuously uh, consuming and, and, and doing it. And he's like... <sighs> and he, he kind of, he's kind of doing this twitching motion towards each of you. Um, and, and, and hang on. And Donovich, is, and Donovich is like, No, don't kill him, don't kill him. Doro, Doro, calm, calm. We'll get you more, we'll get you more. They're injured, and they can... And he's like, injured. <sighs> more. More. <laughs> Uh, and he kind of oh. is like calming him. He's, a little. he's a little calm, uh, uh, calmer, but clearly is ready to get more as he's finishing up what's on the rag and is like sucking on it. So what's everyone doing here? I'm still restraining his dad. You are. Uh, Mary Lou will try to restrain him. Okay. Um, so you go up and go ahead and make a um, attack roll, uh, an armed strike. An armed strike. Natural 20. Hey, oh. welcome to the table with your natural 20. Mary Lou, without a problem, you see him like, you've, you've been in some bar brawls, including some with biting foes, and he immediately <laughs> kind of lashes towards you, and you grab him by the hair, shove his face forward, and put him in like a behind-the-neck arm lock, pushing his hand, pushing his face down towards the floor. And Dora's like, no, don't hurt him. Chain him quickly. Anyone have anything to restrain? And, um... You are successfully restraining him, although, like, for an emaciated-looking kid, this guy's strong, um, and like some kind of power is, is behind his limbs as you guys are as you're working and struggling against him. Um, so, uh, what's everyone doing? So that's what you're doing. You're restraining the father, uh, Jennifer, Nora, Darian. What's your guys' status? Nora's gonna status? at least try and run up and wrap with some rope around him until okay. we find something better. Okay, you've got some rope. So, yeah. Um, yeah, go ahead and make a straight dexterity roll to see how quickly you're able to how. Ably, you're able to um, okay. tie this up. Normally, be at disadvantage, but um, normally be at disadvantage. But Mary Lou's mm. holding him down to strain it. Mm, Fourteen. Fourteen. Okay, that's not bad. Okay. Um, you certainly are able to bind him in a way that it seems like um, it's it's reasonably thorough. Um, but you get the sense that like this guy's stronger than ropes will restrain for much longer. It's helping Mary okay. Lou out, and she doesn't have to keep rolling to. To hold well, I'm him. gonna say like, guys, this isn't gonna hold for long as I'm like tying it. <laughs> okay, so what's everyone else doing? Donovan, chains. Where can I find chains? Does anyone have chains or ways down below? The chains? Down below the chains that I used before. We can just wrap him more thoroughly. There, there, food. Yeah, I'm gonna run down. Okay, you run down. <laughs> There's a like kind of half pulled apart dirt pile at the bottom. Um, go ahead and make a dexterity check as you try and like maneuver over it. Yes, I can do that. I'm so used to playing this with you where you use electronic dice. That's a 10. A 10, okay. You're able to manage to get over. Okay. You kind of, kind of go over it a little. Uh, you're like, glad no one saw that kind of deal. But you got over it. Um, and the chain has indeed yanked off from the pillar. And the collar, which was leather, corded around his neck, mm -hmm. has been just like yanked off and is broken. Okay. But the length of chain is otherwise intact. There was a smaller link at the post that broke. But otherwise, the chain is reasonably intact. Okay. Um, it's about 10 feet in length. A little less than, a little less than ten feet. Okay. About eight feet. Longer. I'm gonna run back up. Okay. <laughs> <in> <laughs> with a noisy, loud chain in your arms, um, laden uh, together between um, the nat twenty and the rope already. Uh, so go ahead and roll with advantage, uh, a straight dex roll to see how ably you are uh, to how able you are to restrain him with chains. Uh, what I want to do is I have a, a piton, piton, piton. I think it's a piton. 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 I wanna. Do you know like when you? When, when you're like trying to choke somebody and you can twist the, the chain tight. Remind me to stay on your good side. Um, <laughs> Garot? 
a garage? A, gar a garage when or a garage? It, when you go yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're tightening it, that's what I'm going to use for that too. So a dex roll? Yeah, go ahead and roll a dex roll. <coughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Oh, there you go! Yeah. <laughs> and kind of grasping at the, at like clawing with deep furrows into the wood, you were able to restrain and, and pull his his um, neck back and kind of have him restrained. He kind of looks like a almost a mummified character now in, in rope and chain. And now he's struggling, kind of twitching in a way, and but guys... is otherwise more stable. He also seems to be um, quite clearly like is starting to lose a little bit of momentum and seems to be calming down at least enough to to listen and it seems like he doesn't he has to fight back but he doesn't want to as much as that makes sense um <sighs> that was good that was good i know right and there's a, a sadistic little twinkle in Jennifer's eye as she's doing that. <laughs> oh, gee. Okay. It's <laughs> oh, only one in a new direction. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Next time, time one of you is giving the blood. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I volunteered you. You're good. You're good. Just, I refused on grounds of a Remind me not to be late on the day that we fight straw. <laughs> 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 All right. So at this point, um, uh, Ismark is like, Wow, well, well done. Uh, Irina, I think you are in good hands after all. Um, uh, excellent strength, my lady. And um, good with the chain. Thank you. Um, it's my first time. And in any case... Um, I was like, okay. <laughs> in any case, there is uh, certainly uh, some concern here, but uh, Doru, with your permission, perhaps we can return. Donovich, perhaps we can return with your permission, your son, to his uh, location, we might need to board up the uh, trap door. He says, yes, yes, don't hurt him. Please, we can find a way to help him. Uh-huh. A, a toad. We, we can definitely and she'll sort of turn away from Donovich. Help him. And, uh, okay. Um, so quickly, uh, let's see. Um, Jennifer and Nora and um, Mary Lou are the ones who have restrained this individual and, and have him at the at their mercy, more or less. Um, so you guys pushing or sending him back down, you know, escorting him back down. Um, he seems more receptive and kind of pliable. He's looking around and he's kind of, you know, twitching as much as he's able to. And he says, What do you want? Just to talk, now that you're calm. Talk, 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 talk. More of that later. More. I'm gonna look at Mary Lou. You, you, you! Me? This... I don't have any cuts though. I have to cut myself. You got one right there. Nora just like slits her hand. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 yes. That. that. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, how, how are how? Why? Why are you like this? <laughs> wow. Uh, uh. <laughs> Nora's like not a people this? person, okay? <laughs> I just ask people why they're like this. <laughs> he, he, he found sees. me. He found me. He got me. He is. I woke. Who, who, who is this person? Can you describe him? The only one. The one. The master. The one. The only one. He must. He is the land, the ancient, and all that is within. Oh. Does he have a favorite initial? <laughs> <laughs> Does it go something like <laughs> You're not getting any further response or reaction from him. But buddy, buddy. We'll, we'll give you more blood. We need more than that. We need more than the ancient. I don't have. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Where am I? You're in your dad's basement, buddy. Dad. Father. Father! Father! Father, please! More, more blood, more answers, please. Ask, ask, ask already. How long have you been like this? All day, all days, all time. Since the, since the revolt, since the days with the mad mage. The mage, he led us there and led us astray. We are gone now. He is gone now. We're all gone. It all went dark, so dark, so dark. What happened?
happened on the day of the re- when you stormed the castle? Everything went dark. Everything went dark. They fought. They fought. The great one and the mage. They cast him down. He cast him down. And there is nothing more left for him to get. Nothing more. Nothing more. He is all gone. It's all gone. It's all over. Do you know why he he made you the way that you are? <sighs> I woke up this way. I woke up. You should know something of that. Oh! Um. Look at you. Touched. Touched. My shadow. I see you as you are. What do you mean? <laughs> I was going to, like, look over at you, like... Mm. She looks perfectly as she has before, her half mask covering part of her face, but otherwise looking like a pale individual. Just cycle back a little. I don't know what he means. Did, did he did he affect anybody else like you? I woke up. I came back That's here. Okay. I came back here and was chained to darkness. Darkness. So hungry. Please, Mar, I've answered. Please, please. He answered. I'll like grab the cloth and like rub some of my blood on it and then like. Again, he just. I like, like throw it out of space. It. Um, <laughs> and it seems to consume it, but again, like, like shuddering, you know, and just clearly receiving his and the the substance he is addicted to, kind of pliable again, and, and kind of what? What do you want? Leave this place before I have to. Let's walk a little bit. I don't think we're gonna get any more out of this. So how how tall is this guy? About five seven. Okay. So while while they're doing this, um, Darian walks over to sort of Kudu and, and says, you know, we're gonna need to restrain him more thoroughly than the post this time. Do you have any ideas? I mean, outside of heavy chain, no, not really. I mean, immobilizing at least a couple of his limbs is going to be better than just his neck. And so he's sort of sure. talking to, to Cluder and he's saying, I was thinking I could half bury him. So right now, yeah, just to clarify, right now his arms are kind of bound to his chest, and he's kind of bound up to the neck um, in chain and rope. So I, like I can dig a hole when he's talking to Cluder. I can dig a hole with my new abilities, and we can drop him in and cover him. And leave his head sticking out. That might give him more restraint with all his feet. I mean, that's what you leave the head about. It's like burying someone in sand, I guess. Get tired after a while. So is that what Darian's doing? That's he's a great idea. Using he's the- talking with Fladu and trying to get Fladu's feedback or getting him on board. Because he's like, I'm not sure I should do this, but this guy seems like he's going to be crazy and might kill the priest. I mean, given the strength he's shown... I would figure he could get out. I mean, it might slow him down for a while, but I think the end result will probably still be the same. I think we still need chains. I think if he's in chains... So he's currently chained, he's currently in rope. Right, buried up So we chain him, we rope chains. him, we bury him. He shouldn't be able to break it out. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, what do you guys think? And, and now he's sort of bringing the rest of the party into the conversation. And she has this idea. What do you think? Or do you have another idea on how to restrain him? I think that's a great idea, and the sooner we do it, the better. Okay, I mean, so do you guys want to try and make him open to the idea? I mean, you guys have control of him clearly right now. Okay. He's in chain. He's in rope. You guys, and he's got blood in him. Uh, he's more pliable, certainly, and and. At, you know, you, between the multiple of you guys with uh, Mary Lou's strength and um, the condition he's in now, you guys can definitely do this without uh, further attempts. So we're, we're going to go try and find you some help and try and make sure that, that you don't harm anybody in the meantime. And Darian's going to cast mold earth and remove five cubic feet of earth okay. so that just his head can stick out. Okay. He says, leave some supply. Leave some supply. I will starve, please. <laughs> Dora, is there anything else you can tell us that can help you? Please leave some supply, it'll help. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> I don't think he's going to tell us anything helpful. I don't think so. Into the pity goes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> push it, push it, 
Edmund and then another five feet of bolt hitter filling him up right up to his neck. So he's in ropes, in chains, in hard packed earth. Okay. He is secured like that. Uh, are you guys leaving any more blood or is he just as he is now? If we really want to save him, if, how much does he need? How often, why don't we ask the priest how much, how often has he been getting fed? At this point, Donovich is kind of in shambles, seeing his son again right. like that. He's not... He's, he's just like... <gasps> do you think we need to give him more blood, or do you think he'll be okay? Make an insight check. Yeah, like, is he telling the truth, or is he just, like, really addicted? Or... You have no idea. You don't know the rate at which blood vampires need blood. Anyone else want to help me? Yeah, I'll... I'll help. Go ahead and make an insight check. He clearly benefited from the blood, but he also got, he was also stronger after he had it, too. Yeah. Um, Wait, you don't know how long he's been down here? Order. Hang on, hang on, Michael. You don't know how long he's been down here. You don't know how, how often he's been fed, so it's very hard to know for sure. He clearly, like I said, clearly benefited from the blood, but also, like, got stronger. You actually notice that some of his more fresh wounds that he's uh, clearly put on himself have closed since he got the blood. Okay. I mean, I've known plenty of guys that act like this about alcohol, and solutions very rarely get a, get them more drunk. Nicholas, just generally, if, if you're proficient in the skill, because I'm proficient in insight, do you roll with advantage? No, proficiency includes your proficiency bonus, which is included in the bonus you're getting to the roll. Okay, then, then he should be all right. He looks a look, at least better off than he was when we found him, right? Because he had scratches and bites and things that are now starting to heal. And we don't want to make him too strong, otherwise he might break out. Yeah, I'm not at this, sure. at this point, you hear from up above, um, Ismark saying, I think we need to barricade this space and leave him be. I'm not leaving Irina near him any longer. Please, let us go. We've all agreed I'm staying, Irina's going, let's... I, I, I think that we should leave this one alone. No offense, Donovich, but you have a little bit more work to do on the praying front, I think, before he is r rightened. Savage. Perhaps if we can all find a better way, more powerful magic, this abbot, anything. But I am not interested in, in uh, exposing Irina any further to this situation. Let's get on out. Let's go visit the shopkeeper. Okay. Does Donovich, like, did he even acknowledge what Ismark was saying to him? Nothing whatsoever. He's like a, a crying, whimpering heap in the corner. This guy is, like, just totally broken. Um, seeing his son like this again, he's just beyond the pale for him. If we barricade it with a bunch of pews, he probably won't be able to get in there, right? Okay. Uh, judging by him, he looks like a sallow, sort of sunken person. Doesn't look like he's eaten a lot lately. Okay. Let's take a moment and really put make it difficult for the father to get in there as well. We don't want him feeding his son. Can okay. I still grab with him, by the way? You've let him go by now. Like, he's okay. loosened. I mean, it's up to you, but he's slackened, and he's just kind of a broken, just solving mess. Uh, but you guys take a few minutes and easily barricade up the, 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 the op semi-opened trap door that allowed Doru to escape the first time, um, putting some pews and stuff over that space. Okay. And you feel confident that, at least for the moment, he's probably not going to make any imminent escape. Okay. Okay. Um, Irina says, Ismark, this is why we have to help. This can't go on, and we can't let more of the villagers succumb to this kind of problem. He said, and he says, I know, Irina, I know, but w w you also need to get out of here so you don't succumb to the same problem. The devil has shown interest in you specifically. She says, yes, that's why I'm going. But first, let us help some others here. Let us go back. Now that it is morning, let us at least go back to the mansion and stay there, you and I. You can keep watch to your heart's content over me and our allies. Yes, are you still willing to help? Yeah, yeah, we can, we can go talk to some of the villagers that might need some help. But Irina, can you spend time today while we're around town really fortifying the mansion so that we can stay there tonight and feel safe about it? Uh, at this point, um, Ismark chimes in and says, I will help make sure that we uh, barricade as best we can, but um, 
Also, I suggest that we leave, that you leave today. Uh, take the time of the dawn to get some head start. It should not be too far to Velaki if you are make some haste. Perhaps more than a day, perhaps not, but early morning like this is the best time to go. Uh, once the night hits, things get worse everywhere in Barovia. Wouldn't we want to leave tomorrow morning, then? Well, it is still relatively early now. You, we must go, and already the attacks are getting worse. The wolves, even in the morning. I don't think if we don't get a night's sleep that we'll be able to survive. Make a persuasion check. Uh, uh, uh. Um, that is, it should be 11. You get the sense, yeah, uh, so he responds um, by saying, I think it is best that we make haste in general out of this. Visit the shopkeeper, deliver the goods, do whatever you have to do, but get through it as best we can because I think the longer that we delay, more reinforcements might attack over and over, and a night's rest is all well and good, but who's to say that it will even be achieved at all? Understood. All right, well, with that, let's let's go um, visit Periwinkle. Mm -hmm. uh, before we leave, um, have you heard about uh, anyone by the name of uh, Lady Eva? Madam Eva? Madam Eva. Gotcha. Yes, I, uh, yes, she is one of the, um, of the Vistani. Uh, I'm not much for fates and fortunes myself. I, uh, suggest you tread carefully if you are to deal with her. I believe she dwells down by uh, the uh, Ivlis River's Serpool, not far on the road. You'll see it on the way, um, but please do not dwell too much if you must visit her. I will not tell you too much of what to do, for you are obviously doing us a great service, but there is also much to be considered here in safety. All right, so what's everyone doing? Let's go to town. Let's get some pies. Laura's starting to walk out the door. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and uh, uh, so somewhere in there, uh, Ismark also says, don't forget to consult your map. Um, it might help determine how long it will take you to get to Velaki. Um, and so pulling out the map, um, I'm sorry, I don't have a good option for it to be, be shown on camera, but it's pretty. Take my word for it, viewers <laughs> at home. It's pretty. Um, uh, I'm, I'm still working my way through learning OBS and the, all the streaming stuff. Um, but uh, you get you are a, with the scale of the map and a little help from Irina who knows her way around a little bit more of this region. Um, the total on the road distance to Velaki is about 40 or more miles, 40, 45 miles, somewhere in that range. Um, and so a normal and a normal day's travel is about 24 miles. Um, that's at normal pace. And on the road, um, how far to the Sayers Pool? To the Sayers Pool? Yeah. You can see it's also um, there. It looks like there's some kind of uh, like crossroads mark um, and um, uh, section that sort of uh, is, is listed as this little pool. Um, but it's not labeled or anything, but um, Irina can point it out on the map for you. And um, shows that uh, it looks like to the to the pool itself total is about ten miles. Is it in the same direction as Falaki? It is. Yes. Uh, you guys are pretty easternmost in Barovia at the village, um, with you know Barovia, the village here, Ravenloft, kind of a little bit to the north, overlooking, um, and then uh, carrying on through the space is all of these other landmarks, and, and Velaki's kind of somewhere in the middle. Well, isn't that convenient? Maybe we can stop there tonight. I can probably uh, rest with the best on me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ismark kind of shifts uncomfortably, but doesn't say anything. Ismark, is there something you want to say? <laughs> I, <laughs> I trust your judgment, but please be careful among the Mistani. They seem nice to me. The devil's spies are everywhere. Oh. Okay. <laughs> All right. With that, um, seems like you guys are parting ways from the pair, the the trio there in the church. Um, 
Um, and you guys are heading out into the open. Is that right? Can I ask, can I talk to Ismark before we go? Mm -hmm. Ismark, um, so Irina was mentioning something about your sword and um, Periwinkle's uncle. What's going what, what does that mean? <sighs> kind of glares at Irina. I traded it. He, you see, we, we, I, we needed more resources to keep barricading up the and repair the, the, the mansion as it was being attacked over and over. And so his charge, his prices are so high and he won't bargain for anything. And so I traded our heirloom, the silvered sword, um, of my father and his father before him for resources to further barricade the, the windows, iron bars, crowbars, and uh, other defenses, some, some, some traps uh, to set for beasts. Oh, well, desperate times. Indeed. At least I have this, and he kind of pats his short sword. Yep, good thing you do. Indeed. Okay, thank you. So having had our little encounter with uh, Doru there, mm -hmm. would Claudio have a better idea of what he is? Or what he's become right now? Um. Or is it that he just wouldn't know? Go ahead and make a religion check. He does not know. <laughs> What'd you get? Six. Um, yeah, it's not totally clear what has become of him. Um, it's... Yeah, I would say not clearly some lesser version of, of the legends that you know of, but not otherwise much more specific than that. Okie dokie. Okay, heading out into the sun... Well... <laughs> the dreary light of day here. Um, the mist is heavy, but through it you can see the heavy, large castle looming in the distance, overshadowing high on the hill, mountain, um, that this area kind of bleeds up against uh, at the base of the town. Uh, the town is at the base of this sort of mountain space where the castle is built upon. Um, and not too far from you, you don't see it, but you do hear sort of a of a cart <laughs> sliding along uh, on cobblestone and gravel. Um, so, what is everyone doing? So, do we? St <laughs> I'm sorry. Do we still have Lancelot with us? Is that little dog still? Trying? Yeah, he's still around. Um, you know, I'm assuming he's kind of on Darian's person. A uh, little little uh, spaniel found in a previous uh, part of the adventure. Um, in the house uh, before we started recording, um, but uh, he sort of. Oh. Um. Well, did, may, maybe. Didn't we determine? <clears throat> so, as far as the little dog goes, didn't we figure out who his uh, who his owner was? Yeah, Gertrude. Gertrude. Gertruda. 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 Mm -hmm. Daughter, uh, who's missing, but Mad Mary is the one that keeps crying apparently. So maybe we should. We should at least swing by and let old Lancelot off. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, and you do hear like. Some sort of what? Like. Let's do that before we go to yeah. the shop. That seems maybe she'll be happier to see this dog. Okay, will help us out with negotiating for good deals and things too. Yeah. Okay, so you go around um, and you uh, heading away from the church, get down back to the main plaza area. Um, you're heading more towards the space where. Um, that intersection was with the mercantile, uh, Bildrath's mercantile, and the Blood on the Vife uh, tavern, um, and that sort of central plaza space. Um, and a little bit past that is um, the house that where the sobbing seemed loudest, um, just past the uh, the mercantile. Um, but as you get to that main plaza, you see a rather hunched, elderly-looking lady with a cart with several uh, stacked, um, steaming pies. Uh, small pies, probably in the hand, like almost a muffin size. Um, and uh, uh, she sees you and her eyes sort of lighten. It's sort of a sunken looking uh, older lady. And she says, Hello! Hello, travelers! Hello! Hello! Well, would you like to buy something uh, stomach scrumbling or things that, uh, you know, could use a little warming in this time of, 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 of 
cold. Oh, yes, yes, it'll be good. Uh, just a little bit. Uh, lovely, lovely recipe. Would you like a little bit of taste? Taste, yes. Um, one gold per pie. Looking at her, how much do I trust her? Go ahead and make an insight check. Oh, the pie sounds delicious. Yes, meat pie. Keep you warm and your stomach full. <laughs> I haven't seen any game around lately. What, 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 would, what meat would you use for these? Oh, well, my daughter and I, and my daughters and I, we work hard to make sure that we have a good mixture of all sorts. Um, you know, there's a uh, wolf and uh, venison and all sorts to find here in the woods if you know where to look for them. Can I make an insight check? Sure. What was your insight check there, Nora? <laughs> Four. <laughs> she seems like a nice old lady to you, and a pie sounds Aww. delicious as a start to your day. <laughs> a 14 for me, Nicholas. Uh, okay. Um, she, uh, seems like, you know, she's, she's selling pie and just kind of <laughs> is doing her thing. Um, you know, so she says, oh yes, very good. And, and the smell is like delicious smelling. You guys haven't eaten anything in this morning. It's kind of how I'm feeling right now. Uh, just hungry and, and solid. Do you want me to get you some nachos? No, nachos? but I'm just teasing. Okay. Uh, thank you, Megan, for the delicious <laughs> chocolate truffles that you make and bring. I'm not too hungry. What about you guys? Um, I mean, what gold's I mean, a lot yeah. for a pie. Like a meal. That, that's the most silver. expensive pie I've ever heard of. Right. Ah, hagglers. Well, name your price. We can maybe work something out. A two for one, three for one, even deal. Look at you all, hungry mouths. <laughs> who, who all wants a pie? You're going to have to compete with the tavern's prices. Yeah, the tavern. What would they know about a good food? That man doesn't have a soul, let alone anything to put into his cooking hive. Put hard sweat, love, and work in my cooking. Oh, it's so delicious, but people love it. Sweat? Oh, metaphorical, sweetie. You gotta talk, you don't understand. I mean, I've spent some time cooking in hot taverns. I, I know it's sometimes not so metaphorical. Oh, we keep most hygienic circumstances. Any inspector would love our, would love to stay and see our uh, set up. It's, it's, it's amazing. Inside check. <laughs> Go ahead and make an insight. <laughs> did you did you mention your name? Oh, I'm uh you can call me Granny. Um my my name is Morgantha, but it's just a little bit formal. I agree. Granny's so, much better. You just call me Granny, you know, everybody does, and it's just great, you know. We can all just benefit from a little bit of a pie. Twenty one. Um she, uh, <laughs> questionable circumstances behind making the uh, the conditions by which she uh the circum the environment in which she's making the pie. Um, well, well, any buyers? Come on, come on, please. As you can see, and you might understand, it's lean times right now. And I think that a one gold pie might be a little bit too indulgent. Thank you, though, Granny. And if you ever want to sell your recipe, let me know. <laughs> oh, a hard bargainer. How about, uh, well, we'll go five silver. Can we, can I see one? I'd like to see the product before I agree. Of course, price. look, look, amazing, isn't it? Mm, smell it in. And I will like gesture towards Lancelot. Be like, what do you think, buddy? He sort of. <laughs> I mean, he's he's seeming hungry, but uh... yeah, I'll make a roll. <laughs> um, he sort of. <laughs> I like oh, pull a little piece of bread out of my pocket and like put it out to see if he like notices. And he's like, you know, kind of immediately like, interested. Wants them. Yeah. I'll be like, and then I'll just like give it to him. Oh yes, nice for pets, but I, uh, you know, uh, you shouldn't feed feed proper food to your for your for your pets. It's important. Uh, so, Miss Me Pie, not really a dog thing, you know. So, um. um. See, this dog is real hungry, man. Yeah, I've, I've seen. <laughs> Granny, what'd you put in that pie? Where's Nora from? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All yeah. right. Um, so she says, "Well, come on, a, a, a package deal, then. Uh, look, there's five of you. Um, five pies, for two gold. You can't beat that. Come on." Well, I mean, with pie that, that smells as good as these ones do, I'm sure you won't have a hard time selling to somebody else. But we're going to have to pass for now. 
I'm sure you'll you'll get more customers. Thank you, Granny. Does she speak for all of you then? Come now, it's good. It's very Aren't you hungry? Granny. I've I've so many rations. I should probably eat some of them. Mary Lou will put down two gold. Oh, oh no, Mary Lou! <laughs> oh, that's a smart woman. I knew you were. And she hands over five pies. Um, so you have five, seven. five minced meat pies added to your uh, and one. toy there. And one. She'll start eating one. Okay. It is delicious. Like, oh. some of the best made pie. And the, the, it's so <laughs> savory and fantastic. Just super delicious. Does she recognize what type of meat it is? Um, you do not. Huh. Look. <laughs> I've never eaten wolf before, so. Is it, is it the wolf that makes it taste like that? Oh yes, and some great seasonings. You wouldn't believe it's so. It's so we, the, the Vistani, they trade. You know, they're they're traders. They bring in exotic goods, and you know, the, the, the exotic spices go a long way. She'll start offering. Well, if this will be all, then good day to you, and uh, thank you for your patronage. <laughs> pies, pies, anyone for the pies? <laughs> you can't just eat meat pie for real, that's how you get food poisoning. Uh, I mean, you drink enough alcohol, it'll kill anything that causes food poisoning. That's, that's fair enough, that's true. Man, my motto, it's a very long motto, but, <laughs> but I like it. <laughs> You fit right in as a dwarf. <laughs> okay, so you guys are, are heading back over to the um, townhouse, though, uh, where Mary was, the crying. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and Gideon's going to have one of his rations while we're walking. Okay. So I, I have pie right, right like, here. I'm not, I'm not going to trust it. Um, we don't play. Okay. You guys make your way into um, uh, the, the, the door, the, uh, the multi story house. That is looking, and all the buildings are, I've seen better days, but this one's looking particularly neglected. And the door is is already a little bit ajar. Um, and again, you just hear the. <laughs> coming from within. Um, what's everyone doing? Which one of us is good with people? I can give it a shot. I'm just gonna like, <laughs> I can look at her toes. Like, I mean, I, I'm okay. But <laughs> so Jennifer will saunter up, knock on the door. Hello. Yeah, we'll go right with. Okay. As you knock on the door, it's like, <laughs> and it's already opened. Um, in the first floor, you see some nice-looking furniture that clearly shows a thick layer of neglect, dust and cobwebs and things like that uh, abound, um, and the sobbing just. <laughs> Um, Lancelot quickly scampers off your person and kind of up the stairs he goes and disappears out of sight. Oh, okay. And the, and the sobs continue. I don't think she can hear us over her sobs. I'm, I'm coming inside. And Jennifer will enter. Okay. It is uh, an open space. Um, it looks like this was some kind of townhouse, bed and breakfasty kind of stay in place um, once upon a time, but everything is shut down and neglected. Is there any like pictures on the wall? Or... Uh, there are not. Okay. Any, like, well, there's some furnishings. There are furnishings. They look nice once upon a time. Okay. Uh, but mostly they're a common room slash kitchen area kind of. Spaces okay. or dining area kind of spaces. Lancelot, where did you go, buddy? No response. This is spooky. Okay, uh, well, <laughs> as opposed to the rest of Barovia, <laughs> you don't just enter in people's houses. We, we literally did that. Like well, the first thing we did when we entered town was enter someone's house. And did did we have a good time? Mm -hmm. yeah, we're well. we got a dog you lost you lost <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of which I'll cast prestigitation to try to keep some of the rot away and keep it cold okay <laughs> I forgot you still have the foot I have the foot <laughs> uh -huh. okay yeah sure uh, it's a foot on ice um, foot on ice but it's uh, looking a little it's smelling a little ripe Man, man, that's the worst oh. Disney on Ice show. <laughs> <laughs> Put on ice. Um, Mary Lou, go ahead and make a con saving throw for me. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. We knew it was poison. Yeah. 
delicious. Uh, eighteen. Eighteen. So just you're like. <coughs> <coughs> Like you, you, and you let out like a, uh, I can't burp on command, but you just let out like a beautiful, just raucous tavern burp. Oh, a little, <clears throat> it should like, Seven swap the burp away. <laughs> a little indigestion? Did you want some, some grape mash to? Yes. I'll hit her right. Okay. Yep. It goes down like well-watered grape vinegar. <laughs> Gotta find some better alcohol. I mean, alcohol's alcohol, but like. Better stuff, but we'll save that. Okay. But in the meantime, let's find the, the owner of this house. And I will start going up the stairs. Okay. Um, you head up the stairs, and um, you see um, what looks like a pair of, of rooms um, that are with doors open, as well as a few other rooms um, that are uh, shut um, farther down the hall. It looks like it's just a general hallway. Um, and... Not much else at the moment. Um, the sobs continue from the room to your left. And they're very loud. <laughs> um, so there... Dar- Darian's with me, right? Yep, I think so. Um, is there... The house is unkept, so there might be a layer of dust on all over the surface. Is that right? Uh, basically all over this hall that you're in, yes. Is there anywhere I can see that the dust has been disrupted? Yes, the room to the left seems clean. The threshold, at least. The it, dust doesn't go prints. farther. I'm sorry? Are the dog prints? Yeah, the dog prints are up and to the left as well. Hello? Hello? <laughs> can I come Who is in? it? <laughs> Hi, my name's Jennifer. I think I found your dog. Your daughter's dog or something. I don't remember. I don't remember having a dog. <laughs> oh, well, it That's remembers you. <laughs> um, do you head into the left? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Confident strength. I love it. I don't want to. Nor is like following you, like peeking okay. around. Okay. So you, to watch. great. I love it. Um, you head on in. I love the role playing. You head on in. Um, and it's sourced from the sobs and weeping are sourced from a, a, a stricken looking. Uh, old and, and frail woman in her 50s. She kind of has mousy, gray, brown hair. Um, and, her, and her whole face is stretched tight and thin. She's kind of gaunt and miserable looking. Surprise, surprise. Um, <laughs> there's a bed that's quite tidy and neatly kept. Um, it looks like the size of uh, maybe for a teenager. Um, Lancelot is curled uh, on the bed there and he's whining. Um, in Ma- uh, Mary's hands is what it looks like a doll, and she's like cradling it. Oh, my Gertrude, it's gone! She's gone! Are you, are you Mary? Yes, who are you? Hi, Mary, I'm Jennifer. I'm Jennifer. You're a lovely young thing, just like my daughter was. She's gone now. Mary, I... I, heard I only wanted to keep her safe. Can you tell me what happened to Gertruda? I I locked her in because the times are bad. And she escaped. She climbed out the window. And she kind of gestures to a window, which looks like it's been recently boarded up after being broken. Um, and uh, she's gone missing. I don't, I can't imagine what's happened to her. Wolves are the devil's minions. The devil himself might have interest in her. Please. Mary, she might she might be okay. How long has she been missing? A few, a few days, a week, maybe. Uh, what does your daughter look like? She's lovely. Uh, tall-ish. And uh, ivory, beautiful skin like a princess. Brown hair. And beautiful, bright, bold green eyes. And they'll wander in. She the only youngish girl that's been taken or missing? I don't know. I've just tried to keep her safe, but times are bad. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> um, those of you who are in the room, uh, what? Who has the highest passive perception? Who's got pass? Who's got the passive perception of the team? I got eleven. Okay. I presume I would have gone in with them since I had nothing else to do. Yeah, if you want to. And what is passive perception? Uh, it should be 10 plus your 
perception bonus. Ten plus perception bonus. Yep. Okay. I got eighteen. Uh, that's sixteen. Okay. There should, there should be a section for you to write it on your, on your that thing, but we'll get to that later at a different point. Now, sixteen and Nora. Eleven. Okay. Eight. Eight. Okay. Um, <laughs> Cladu, you notice um, that as you are looking farther into the room. Um, Kind of a creepy looking doll that she's holding onto. Um, it's got a kind of a weird looking, like, kind smile. of weird, cheesy grin <coughs> smile and kind of weird looking eyes. Um, it's got a tag uh, by the base of the dress uh, that it's wearing, which is a yellow dress. Hmm. Um, but otherwise, it is also clear to you that the dog is unhappy. Lancelot does not. He's like pacing along the bed. He's sort of, um, and then comes over back to Darian and kind of circles around your legs and kind of sits on your foot and kind of rubs up against you. Where do you think she might have gone? I don't know. She left. She ran away when I was out getting food. And she was gone. Anywhere. I'm worried that she's been taken to the castle. She'll never come back from there. Oh. Does she have any friends in the town? No one has friends anymore. Funny. <laughs> <laughs> Pandemic life. <laughs> well, we might be heading that way anyway. If we see her... Yes, bring her back to me, please. I'll do any. I'll give you anything, please. We don't. We don't need your stuff, lady. I, I think. I think we can all agree if we find her, we'll bring her back, no ma- matter what. Oh, thank you, thank you so much, thank you. Hey, Mary, is that is that Gertruda's doll? Yes, yes, isn't it great? It was mine when I was a child too. Is it something that maybe we can take so that when we find Gertruda, we can convince her that that it came from you and that you're looking for her? That is a great idea. Um, but uh, she says, Okay, I don't like parting with it, but sure. And she hands it over. Again, creepy looking doll. Um, and you read the tag. It says, Is no fun. Is no Blinsky. It's a, gr- a lovely doll. Uh, hey, uh, Miss Mary. Um, do you... Yes, <laughs> short man with a beard. <laughs> hey, uh, do you... <laughs> Do you have any articles of clothing of hers? Like, maybe we can get Lancelot to maybe follow her scent? She took... Uh, she packed a bag or, or something because her clothes are gone, too. Is it her pillow still? But, uh, uh, Lancelot... I don't... This this dog might recognize her scent if she's been on her bed already. Dogs are smart that way, aren't you? And she kind of, like, reaches out to pet, like, as if it's the first time meeting the dog. And Lancelot kind of backs away. You've never seen this dog before? No. And then it was on her its collar that. Yeah. And then I'll show it to Mary. But I think this was your daughter's dog, was it not? I don't know. I don't know. But if she loved it, then take it back to her and bring her back to me. Can I make an insight check? Sure. Me too. Ooh, sure, you can roll a, separately. I think that's a... That's an 18. Okay. Probably better than mine. Uh, nope, 21. All right, see? Never know. Roll it out. Um, the uh, sense you're getting is not quite as severely as Donovich, but she's not all there. And the reaction of the dog might be explainable by... Um, the reaction of the dog might be explainable by virtue of neglect, maybe? That's kind of what you get in the sense of. Okay. Mm-hmm. Definitely Gertrude's dog, not Mary's. Possibly. Yeah. Yeah. Does your daughter have any reason to be hanging out in that mansion, sort of on the edge of town? That's where we found the dog. No! What, what mansion? There's no mansion there, it's just ruin. Well, the ruins. Or would she have hung out there before it was ruins? <laughs> it's never not been ruins as far as I've been uh, here in Barovia. Spooky. Um. <laughs> 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 I 
<laughs> you know, I like looks over at Mary Lou. <laughs> like. <laughs> All right. Can we, um, Nora's going to try something. Okay. She's going to cast Speak with Animals and see if she can talk to Lancelot. Oh. Aww. Okay, nice. Um, so let me, what's the spell text of Speak with Animals? Amazing. I, 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 books I have, just. Um, I'm going to use this if you don't mind. Yeah. Because it, uh, so it like sometimes have a little bit more. While you're pulling that up, could you say the, the dollmaker's name again? Blinsky. Blinsky. Speak with animals. You gain the ability to communicate. The awareness is limited by their intelligence, but at minimum, they can give you information about one nearby locations and monsters, including whatever you perceive. Okay. All right. Yeah. You cast it, um, and you sort of feel a sort of wind rush over you a little bit, um, and uh, kind of focus in on the dog. What What are you trying to communicate? Well, I'm gonna like sit down and like, hey, buddy, and like have a little bit of food out. Um, Oh, thank you. I'm very starving. I have looked at it and I like give him like the rest of the ration I have. Okay, subtract so another ration <laughs> yeah. in addition to what you ate um, for the day. Okay. Um, and he's uh, like laughs it up. <laughs> is is so Gertrude? Is she your person? Yes, she's she's lost, missing. This one left me alone. No food. I had to wander. Honey, is that how you got into the house? Yes, yeah, scary place. Oh, honey. Thanks for taking me out of there. That's nice. I'll give him like some scratches. Like. Oh, that's good. Oh, just a little. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. Like, get that right. spot. You yeah. Get that leg going. Oh, my leg is just like. Um, but then she'll she'll be like, where um, where where were you last time you were around Gertruda? Here. I didn't know that. I couldn't, I can't reach as far, and he sort of oh. kind of jumps up and kind of oh, noses towards the tall window, yeah. and like couldn't hold her back, and she says, he says, wait here, and he sort of pads under the bed, <laughs> and brings back in his mouth a little scrap of a dress, it looks like it's a purplish dress, okay. and she said, I, uh, and he kind of noses it towards <laughs> you, I, I, I pulled this off her, her fur when she was departing. Oh, honey. But I couldn't make her stay. <laughs> oh. Do you, do you remember? <laughs> you get the sense that there's an exchange going on, which is very strange to you and news to you that she can do this. But, like, obviously the dog retrieved this thing, so there's some okay. reciprocity happening here, yeah. or um, yeah. reaction happening. Yeah. Do you, do you remember how many, how many, oh, what would be a dog's sense of time? <laughs> How many darks ago it was? <laughs> oh, maybe three turnings. Four turnings? Okay. Four turnings, I think. Okay. You are such a good boy. <laughs> I'll just like Thank give you for all finding me. Can I come with you? Do you want to come with us? Yeah. I don't want to stay here and starve. Oh, honey. <laughs> yes, You guys of have all the nice, yummy smelling things. <laughs> Also, I can't believe that girl ate her pie. <laughs> so Did you not smell that? I was a little tempted, though. She seemed like a nice granny. I'm glad you were there to stop me, though. Thank you, Lancelot. I do my part, I do my part. <laughs> hey, if, if we have this doll and this dress with us, do you think you can still smell Gertruda? Oh, yes, I can. Yeah? Do you yes, think? I can. Do you think you can help us maybe find her as we're going along? Yes, I can. Yeah? Yes, I can. Oh, you're such a good boy. Yes, yes, I can. Why, why do you run play a dog so well? It's very important. Do a good job. Have you, when you were, um, so you were with her when she, she left? Yeah? Yes, tore you, the scrap. Do you remember feeling any feelings she was having or like what she was doing in previous days? Like, did she, she wanted out. Off? She wanted to explore. I told her not to go. I told her with my best words, but she didn't listen. Oh, oh my gosh. So, so, so Nora's just going, oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> this is like the only time you ever yeah, see her like. Is she speaking common to the dog? Like, like, <laughs> no, th there's, there's an exchange of nonverbal communication that's happening that you're getting the sense that's translating <laughs> to words toes. in your mind. <laughs> Via the magic that you've used, but this is yeah. entirely nonverbal. Are you 
Nora, are you are you okay, Nora? Uh, yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> okay. She's not a people person. That's fine. <laughs> How do you talk without biting your tongues? I feel like you would do that. <laughs> All the motion. It's worrying. You should talk. You should learn to talk with your heart and with your faces, not with your words. <laughs> Oh, it's a lot. I just like bring him in and like do a head cuddle. Oh, like, that's it's nice. Fine. Right there. It's been a while. Yeah. You can't kill this one. I mean, this is nice, but we. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we're just watching. Play with the dog, Lancelot, basically. Lancelot, is there anything else you noticed about Gertruda? Like anything that would help us find her? She. Did she smell always wanted to in be a out. different way? She always wanted to be out. She was anxious, adventurous. But she's not totally careful. Did you smell any weird things on her any time? Not smell. any more than usual. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Try to figure out if she's been anywhere. Okay, buddy. Can we go now? I don't, yeah. I don't want to stay here no more much longer. We'll, we'll go here in just good. a minute, okay? Her heart's hurting and I can't help her anymore. I know. You'll come with us, don't worry. We're gonna okay. go try and find and her too. She, like, the, the tail's kind of giving a, a continuous wag now. Yeah. We're gonna go find Gertrudo, okay? <laughs> yes, yes, good thing, good thing, important. <laughs> okay, and we'll take care of you. <laughs> okay, that sounds nice. <laughs> okay, and then I'll, I guess. Okay. Are, are nice. You, are you you done playing with the critter? I mean, I mean, he's cute, I guess, but I think we have more important things to do. That is a good dog, you guys. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We've been, <laughs> literally been traveling with that, like, this whole time. I mean, he, he's fine, I guess. Yeah. Not well, really an animal just, person. I was just chatting with him. Um, sounds like Gertruda tried to leave one day and he couldn't keep her from going. Here's, and I show you, like, the cloth of, like, the dress. <laughs> by ch- what do you mean by you were chatting with the dog? Oh, yeah. I've, I've done this before. Um, yeah. That it's <laughs> just a little hobby of mine. Wait. Don't question it. We got, we got information. We got the scrap. We're gonna find the girl. And and Lancelot is um, gonna. He's have doing that like pointer thing where he like gets to the end of the door and he's like. <laughs> <laughs> I like walk up and be like, boy. <laughs> Gives you like a little tail wave. Anyone else talk to animals? Like. <laughs> I mean, deep in my cups, sure, but not like this. Deep in my cups. <laughs> <sighs> deep in my cups. <laughs> Okay, um, Mary, thank you for, for letting us know. Yes, please, come back to me with her. Okay, can you get some rest and... <laughs> Maybe. Okay. Let's get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, do you guys make your way out? Everyone got what they needed? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Can I do a quick look around the room before we leave? Sure, perception check. Just in case we missed something. I don't something. trust this lady. <laughs> that was cockeyed. Look. And that is... Nice. She really neglected Lancelot. It's a cleaned room. It's not right now. You're not noticing yeah, anything no. otherwise un, uh, out of the ordinary aside like from the broken window that's been boarded up. Okay. Actually, is the glass broken inside towards us? Is there glass on the ground or would it look like maybe more outside? Mm, there's not glass on the ground. Okay. The, the space is clean, so it possibly could have just been cleaned up too. Remember this happened a few days ago at least. Yeah, gotcha. Can we peek in oh, the yeah. other room? Okay, yeah. The other room that was open appears to be a larger bedroom. Um, with a larger bed, but shows every sign of neglect, even worse than what was down below. Okay. I also mentioned to everybody that Lancelot seems to think is probably like three or four days. That's better than a week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The odds kind of... Yeah. <laughs> a little better odds now. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, th- I think we can probably find the missing girl. Like, I, I, don't, I don't think, even if it had been a week, I think we could find her. Well, let's it go. Was great, great role playing as a dog. That was fantastic. <laughs> that was yeah. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and, and on that, I have to dip a few minutes early, so I'll say goodbye now. Okay, no problem. Well, thanks for joining right. in, Michael, and uh, we'll catch you next week. See you, Michael. All right, sounds good. Have a good night. Thanks, guys. We'll keep your other foot intact. <laughs> no promises. <laughs> Brutal. Um, okay. Um, well. Um, with that, what's uh, everyone doing? I gotta adjust some stuff here. Sure. Um, so, why don't I... Um, 
Do you want to go down to Peri Periwimple's shop and, and figure out name? Periwimple? It's a really nice stout name. <laughs> I mean, Maybe it has a dwarvish ring to it, no? No. Um, <laughs> More gnomish? Yeah. Sounds like a gnome, maybe an elf. Oh, yeah. sorry, sometimes I confuse the two. Gnomes and elves? Gnomes and dwarves. Uh, That's this is fair. Kind of screwed a little I mean, bit. They're with all short. <laughs> Michael dipping out is kind of screwed a little bit with the uh, <laughs> the window capturing uh, that Can I. Can put like have a used. screenshot of his face there? So <laughs> <laughs> that'd be handy. Um, unfortunately, I don't have it right now. Yeah. Um, so I got to resize this here. Um, go ahead and continue talking amongst yourselves here. I'm just gonna play around with some of this. Sorry for those of you watching at home and have to deal with the mess. Um, it is a learning experience for me. So. Uh, Mary Lou will lean down towards Claudio. And sort of point at Nora. That was weird, right? Like you can't, you can't do that, right? Uh, no, that was that was really weird. But I mean, she's really into her chainmail too. So I mean, <laughs> can she talk to her chainmail? You think? <laughs> you know, that have might we, be why. Have we asked her? I think that's all of it. But maybe we shouldn't ask. Hey, Nora. Oh, so far. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nothing. You just look great. Oh, in, in your chainmail. I was like, like jiggling my chainmail. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Here, I'll just be a big picture, I guess. Uh, we'll, we'll just do this. Okay, so battle plan. We'll go down the shop, see what he wants, because it's going to be something. There's going to be some horrible trauma that he's experiencing. Um, and then what's our plan after that? Maybe we can go to the, the tavern and see if the uh, uh, Vestoni is still there. Ooh. Yeah, and then maybe head on our way. I really want to speak to Madame Eva. Yeah, we should probably get there before we get to that pool. Something tells me that the roads aren't going to be super safe. So, okay, hopefully that's like? better. Thank ten, you for ten miles keeping with us there. Mm -hmm. I'll probably leave around noon, noon or one. Yeah. What time is it right now? Not in real life, in the game. Um, <laughs> Eight forty-two. <laughs> in uh, in game terms, it is about. Remember that you went pretty early morning. You guys were up there at the graveyard at five in the morning, roughly. Um, you're still getting used to this whole like day-night deal. Um, being from Lumoria, where it's constant one or the other, um, you are uh, guessing that is a, a few hours have passed since you began your ordeal. Well, so we might be coming up on noon pretty quickly. You'd, you'd say probably closer to about seven, eight o'clock in the morning. Oh, okay. okay. A few hours from five, right? Because you bury the priest and did all that. So it's about about eight o'clock. This is all early. <laughs> okay, we have time. Yeah. <laughs> Quick change of heart. <laughs> <laughs> We're fine. That's nice. Let's try to leave the city by noon. by noon. We'll like check in with Ismark and Irina before yeah. we leave. Sound good? Yeah. Okay. Anyone want any pies? It'd give me a bit hint of an a, a indigestion. L Lancelot says. Um, they be nasty. <laughs> I've, even, I've really seen want. dogs eat out of the garbage. I'm he not sure I trust my ration. I trust that's been in my pocket for a while. But that's the whole thing: is if he's willing to eat out of garbage, and he says that's nasty, that's that gives you a sense of his scale. I mean, it was delicious. <laughs> I, d I just, I just maybe wouldn't eat any more. <laughs> yeah, I do have a little bit of heartburn. Well, yeah. Let's go drink alcohol. That will help. <laughs> After we go talk to Periwinkle. Okay, so you guys heading over to the Bildrath's Mercantile, is yep. that right? Yep. Okay, get that little section open. Uh, Alrighty, so you're heading over through the, the rain, or not through the rain, through the morning mist, and away from the sort of quieted sobs now of Mary. And you head to... No, I don't need this anymore. Thank you. Book. Um, you head to a general store. It's a, it's a larger establishment, maybe 70 feet by 40. Um, and you guys enter in, and behind the, the counter, there's, there's quite a bit of supplies. It's a pretty well-stocked store, actually. Um, and behind the counter is uh, a pair of individuals, um, sort of a kind of gruff and grouchy-looking man, struggling to maintain any hair on his head, kind of combing over style, um, with a patchy beard. And he appears to be berating, um, or, or, or shouting down at a buff and big individual who is looking quite contrite. 
um, uh, someone who is about as muscular as Mary Lou and easily seven feet tall. Um, and he's like, I sorry, I know, I know I shouldn't have done, but I sorry, it's okay, uh, uncle, sorry, no. And um, the man is like, we are not a charity organization. We are charging customers to pay. Do not give away our items and stay away from Irina. Leave her alone. She's cursed. The devil's after her and nothing good will come of it. I promised I would keep... Oh, customers. Well, what can, what can I help you? Uh, what are you looking for? What can I help uh, you buy? I'm looking for some pleasant customer service and not hearing people yell at their nephews, but I don't think I'll find that here. And how did you know that he was my nephew? He called you uncle. Right, right. <laughs> well, um, what can I get you? Well, I, I have... I have... I have goods. Uh, surely... Uh, motley traveling crew and he kind of lingers his eyes over the dwarf and over Darian who look a little exotic to his eye um, I'm sure that I can strike a deal and give you something you need what come on now surely you have something yeah, they're just glaring a name first is always appreciated I'd like to know who I'm doing business with uh, Bildrath Bildrath Kentamir nice to meet you Bildrath service. and this is uh, Barry Wimple my nephew as we've clearly established <laughs> I'm Jennifer, and I'll put a hand out. Oh, uh, John, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> Bill Draft, it looks like you have a lot of things in stock. Sure um, do. Can you give me an idea of what kind of products you'd be offering today? Oh, all sorts. Uh, I've got uh, knickknacks, torches, rations, water skins. I've got uh, bags and, and things. I could sell you a tent, even. Um, we've got, uh, you know, some rope if you're in need of rope. Uh, we've got all sorts of things that might suit your fancy and serve your purpose. Um, just let us know what you need, and we'll take care of the rest. Jennifer is going to put on an act of being unimpressed. Hmm, I was hoping that you would have a few items of maybe a little bit finer taste. Well, uh, we have it all. What What is it that you are uh, looking to get? I'm browsing. Sometimes a lady just likes to spend money. Uh, sometimes I like to get it. So, um, I'm sure we can work out a deal. Uh, what, uh, speak to me of your need as a lady and as, as a traveler. Is it clothes that you desire? Is it, uh, more comfortable bedding? Surely, Perry, go on, fetch, fetch some of the nicer clothes, the traveling ones that we have, uh, for this lady. Uh, yes, uncle. Okay, traveling clothes. Travel, travel. The way we speak to our underlings really says a lot about us, doesn't it? I'm comfortable. <laughs> well? Oh, I'm anything sorry. Anything further? I, I, thought, I thought you were... Oh, here he comes. Here he comes. Here he is. And um, there's, he. you know, Perry Wimple has perfectly adequate and unremarkable clothing um, that is, is there and, and, and fit for a woman. Um, you know, can fit your size, and um, I got a little something up here really fast. Um, as far as price goes, um, and he says, "Oh yes, yes, the finest thing, straight from the Vistani, traveling from far lands and oh, wo yeah. wonderful exotic things." Uh, you're looking a bit threadbare, if I uh, might be so honest. So perhaps some uh, something might d do you uh, good in a, in a change of wardrobe. Only twenty gold. <laughs> I'll hold up the garment, and I'm going to use Minor Illusion to show some loose threads, and I'll, like, kind of pull at them. So you have to uh, speak and do some gesturing to do the magic. Oh, okay. Um, oh. Unless it specifically doesn't have a verbal or somatic component, but I believe it has both. Um, I don't think it has a verbal, but I think it has somatic. Maybe hide your hand action behind the... <laughs> Can I do that? Can I... Yeah, go ahead and make a slight of hand check. Okay. Ooh, I, I think I'm pretty good at that. Fourteen. Fourteen. Um, he's he notices what you're doing, um, and he says, "We don't allow magic here. Uh, if I see you again around here, I'm gonna have to ask Perry Wimple to show you his knuckles." So please oh. escort yourself from my store. The rest of you, no magic, purchases only, all sales are final. 
I understand, though, Traff. And I'll, like, touch his forearm. I didn't mean to offend you. Out. Now. Your shop sucks anyways. And I'll leave. (laughs) Now, the rest of you, I'm sure you can be reasonable and uh, keep this without uh, a magical flavor in its transaction. Money is money, and we don't need to get magic involved. Yeah, I mean... I mean, I never give anything a magical flavor, and she just sort of cracks her knuckles and puts them behind their head. She has not stopped glaring at him this entire time. Okay, make an intimidation check. Ooh. Mm. This is going to be one of those encounters. Uh, that intimidation... Uh, math, 15. 15, Okay. I mean, he's lived in Barovia, so not the most scary thing, but he's still kind of eyeing you warily. Um, And he says, uh, hey, Perry, why don't you go check on that magic user, make sure she's not up to anything nefarious. I'm just going to go to her. Nefar? Nefar? Anything up to no good. Get out there. Uh, Okay, okay. Um, And he he exits. Um, And you've already exited, right? Yeah. Okay. We'll get to that in just a sec. Sure. Um, any, anything else? Anything else? Come on now.